Hello, world. Thank you for joining us this evening. I am happy that everyone has uh, come to watch us on Facebook Live here. Uh, we're really excited about about doing this episode. Is this is Cordero's first episode, and this will be the first one to hear from him. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So right now, if you can, if as you're watching this, uh, we want to get as many viewers as possible, obviously. So if you can hit the share button, that would be much appreciated. Um, I, I can't get anything for you. I can <laughs> I can say thanks, but at this point, I cannot afford anything other than a thanks. That's all we can give, and um, I miss what you guys started with. But what's up, Cordero and Shane? So hope you guys have hey. a good weekend. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully no security guards will sneak up on us this evening. Yeah, I was going to ask, <laughs> how was uh, spending that night in jail? Oh well, it was good except for the except for the well, we're trying to keep this clean now. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, my my <laughs> my ability to tell jokes has been severely uh, <laughs> uh, hampered by the fact that we want to to be clean. So yeah. it was pleasant, and um, yeah, that I have nothing. It was well, just it was all <laughs> be vulgar. You know, I was gonna. Th I was thinking about this, and I was gonna ask you guys because um, I know we kind of have a bit of educating um, podcasts or whatever. But on the live stream, I feel like you know we could just be like parental advisory. This is uh, not as clean. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you guys. Uh, that's true. I guess we could put it out there. But um, as far as just just being good people, <laughs> uh, we don't want to <laughs> alienate anybody. Sure. So, yeah. I'm with you. But parental advisory, some things may slip out uh, as we go along. Not <laughs> not slip out, but like you know, words. Nothing more than words. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. See where you're going with that. And um, uh, you know, I didn't want to start playing the podcast right away. But if you guys are joining us, um, we're kind of going to try this uh, newish format where we uh, talk a little bit play the episode for you and then we'll come back and kind of follow up on the episode and talk a little more so definitely stick around uh we want to uh chat with you guys and interact and get direct feedback on that episode and uh talk a little more about mr magic johnson yep. so forgive me I'm, I'm if you hear my phone i'm also going to try to uh keep up with anybody who is is uh, t checking in with us to watch the episode, so I'll be handling the uh, the comments as well. Um, so thank you for joining. I know my my girlfriend actually did a, a great job getting people to to join the the broadcast today. So we'll get some listeners in from Fort Lauderdale, North Carolina, and and things like that. So uh, yeah. Nice. So without further ado, do you want to jump into the episode? Um, up to you guys, I guess. So let me uh. Let me... Well, let's have Cordero preface it. Okay. Uh, so, Cordero, okay. you want to tell us a little bit about this episode? Yeah, this question came from came from from uh, from, um, from the survey that we did, um, asking the listeners to, to submit some questions and then vote on the top three. This was the third of those three, and this one is how is Magic Johnson still alive? So, in this one, we go into um, basically the ins and outs of why that that's not a dumb question. First of all. And then go into the answer of that. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. So the the listener um, that asked the question is Alicia Wea from Orlando. Uh, he's part of the group Trio. He's also a phenomenal producer and a solo artist. Um, but he was the one that asked the question. I remember when he asked it, I immediately thought this is a great question. And then it also came at a time when Magic Johnson is back in the news. Um, it's something that you'll actually hear in the episode coming up in just a moment. Cool. And uh, here, before I get started, I'm going to do a quick audio check on it and see if it starts bouncing around. What's going on with my life? Yeah. Nope, okay. So I'm going to have to switch audio inputs real quick and play it. Uh, and we'll, like I said, promise, we'll be back. <laughs> Anything else before I switch everybody up? Hey, you know, welcome to everyone that's watching right now. Ken, uh, Kendra in Ocala, uh, Samantha Armas in Ocala as well. My boy Carl Murray from from uh, Orlando. 
uh, aka West Fifth, and Lauren in North Carolina. They're the ones that are joining us right now. Hopefully, many more will join as the show goes on. Please, 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 please share it. Thank you um, and everything. Just share it. Let's get some more people watching this. And then uh, some behind the scenes stuff. As I play this, you guys can talk. Uh, but I will be muted, and we will see everybody back at the end. You'll hear the episode too, so I might mess with your head, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. There we go. We're headed that way now. Let's make sure we got some audio bouncing around. Unless it's crashed. Going on with my life. life. Man. All right. Let's switch over. Going on with my life. life. And, and uh, uh, I, guess I guess now, now I, can I can enjoy some, some of the other sides of living. living. Yeah, yeah, because, because of the season, season and uh, uh, the long uh, practices, practices and so, and so on. on. I just, I just want, want to say November 7th, 7th 1991, a room is packed wall-to-wall with reporters, photographers, and sports writers, and what will become one of the most famous press conferences in sports history. They are all waiting to hear from one of the most successful and respected athletes in the world. Coming off of his ninth finals appearance, having already won five in his early 30s, and has at least five good seasons left in him. Why is he calling the press conference? Are the rumors true? Is he leaving the team? Taking his talents to South Beach? Retiring to play baseball? He was considered by many to be the greatest basketball player in the league. Possibly the greatest of all time. Well, what about Michael Jordan? Maybe. He's only got one ring. He's good, but he's not magic. The entire room is silent. Only camera shutters can be heard as a nervous Magic Johnson steps to the podium. The HIV virus that I have. Attaining, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers uh, today. Um, I just want to make clear, first of all, that I do this not was over 25 years ago. Not even three weeks later, rock star Freddie Mercury would confirm that he has tested positive for HIV and that he has AIDS. He died 24 hours later. Monday, the 25th of November. The rock star Freddie Mercury has died of AIDS. The 45-year-old lead singer of Queen died at his home in London. The following year, Magic Johnson was absent from the NBA, but played in the 92 Olympics as an integral part of what became known as the Dream Team. Now, for those of you who don't know, they were pretty much the Avengers or the Justice League of basketball. It was the we are the world of sports. And the flashballs were popping like crazy all around the 12,500 seat arena as the fans here tried to get a group picture of the American squad. Remember Space Jam? Imagine if the Monstars were the good guys and they were able to get Michael Jordan too. Every game was a blowout and Magic looked perfectly healthy. Meanwhile that same year Arthur Ashe, another famous athlete, would announce that he had contracted HIV. personal matter that he or she would like to keep private, so did we. There was certainly no compelling medical. He died less than a year after. In 1994, Magic created the Magic Johnson All Stars, which was a basketball team outside of the NBA that played teams from all over the world. At one point, the team had a perfect 55 and 0 record. Fast forward to 1995, yet another high-profile celebrity, Easy E, would announce that he too was HIV positive. Last week, the rap world was stunned to learn in a press conference held by his lawyer that Easy E had been admitted to Cedar Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles and diagnosed as suffering from full-blown AIDS. He died only 10 days later. This same year, Magic Johnson decided that he would return to the Lakers in 1996 for one more season before retiring for good. He since has said that he would not have retired in 1991 if he knew then what he knows now about the virus. It seems that he knew very little about it, and we, the public, knew even less. How were all of these rich and famous people dying from the same disease? And knock on wood, how is Magic Johnson still alive? To answer that question, we first have to answer a few others. First, what is HIV? Second, what is AIDS? And third, What's the difference? So what is HIV? HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. If left untreated, HIV can lead to the disease AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Unlike some other viruses, the human body can't get rid of HIV completely. So once you have it, you have it for life. 
HIV attacks the body's immune system, specifically the CD4 cells, the T cells, which help the immune system fight off infections. If left untreated, HIV reduces the number of CD4 cells in the body, making the person more likely to get infections or infection-related cancers. Over time, HIV can destroy so many of these cells that the body can't fight off infections and disease. These opportunistic infections or cancers take advantage of a very weak immune system and signal that the person has AIDS, which is the last state of HIV. No effective cure for HIV currently exists, but with proper treatment and medical care, HIV can be controlled. The medicine used to treat HIV is called antiretroviral therapy, or ART. If taken the right way, every day, this medicine can dramatically prolong the lives of many people with HIV, keep them healthy, and greatly lower their chance of transmitting the virus to others. Today, a person who is diagnosed with HIV, if they're treated before the disease is too far advanced, and if they stay on treatment, they can live nearly as long as someone who does not have HIV. So what is AIDS? AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. AIDS is the final stage of HIV infection, and not everyone who has HIV advances to this stage. AIDS is the stage of infection that occurs when your immune system is badly damaged and you become vulnerable to opportunistic infections. When the number of your CD4 cells fall below 200 cells per cubic millimeter of blood, you are considered to have progressed to AIDS. The CD4 count of an uninfected adult who is generally in good health ranges from 500 to 1600 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. You can also be diagnosed with AIDS if you develop one or more opportunistic infections regardless of your CD4 count. Without treatment, people who are diagnosed with AIDS typically survive about three years. Once someone has a dangerous opportunistic illness, life expectancy without treatment falls to about one year. People with AIDS need medical treatment to prevent death. So, how is Magic Johnson still alive? Magic Johnson has HIV, not AIDS, an important distinction that would become more significant with each high profile case. While neither has a cure, HIV can be controlled and both can be treated in ways that extend life expectancy. Early on, it seemed like the difference between HIV and AIDS was essentially the difference between check and checkmate. HIV, much like when you were in check, meant that you must act in a way that kept you in the game. If you didn't act at all or acted in the wrong way, made the wrong move, checkmate, game over. That may have been the case at the start of the outbreak, but today that perspective is outdated. AIDS and HIV patients are planning for the future and many HIV patients are living full lives. Just this month, more than a quarter century after being diagnosed with HIV, Magic Johnson has rejoined the Los Angeles Lakers. President Bus finally pulling the trigger, naming Magic Johnson their new president of basketball operations while firing both longtime GM Mitch Cup. This time he's not a player. He's the president of basketball operations. He is still realizing plans that he made in his original retirement press conference. There are countless conspiracy theories about the origin of the virus. One of the most popular theories is that the government developed the virus and intentionally infected gay men in the late 70s in hepatitis B experiments. Another theory is that the CIA intentionally infected prison populations with the illness. So they're, they're infecting you with all kind of mess and when you come out running to your girlfriend who's been waiting on you and you drop AIDS on her. Now, I have to say, most of the theories you've heard have been discredited for years, but they still make great stories. The most popular theories all have common themes. First, that the virus is man-made. Second, is that the government intentionally infected specific sections of its own population. And finally, that there is a cure, and it is being kept from poor people. This one has gotten extremely popular due to Magic Johnson specifically. Bottom line, it's a government op. Remember Magic Johnson said he had it and was going to die, and then suddenly, oh, I'm fine, I got the cure, and they told him to shut up. From the start, AIDS was tied to sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and then sports. It's no surprise that there were so many rumors over time that were just accepted as fact. The lack of answers made people fill in the blanks with whatever made sense to them. For many people, maybe even some of you, most of the answers about AIDS and HIV just create more questions. The most common is, where did it come from? I don't know where AIDS comes from. Who the f*** knows? Scientists don't even know. Scientists still say AIDS started because somebody had sex with a monkey. Word. Some people believe the source of the immunodeficiency virus in humans is actually a type of chimpanzee in Central Africa. 
The theory is that these chimps carried a version of this virus that mutated when humans came in contact with their infected blood somehow, most likely from eating it. This actually isn't a conspiracy theory, at least not in the same sense as the other theories about the origin of the virus. This theory is actually posted on the ace.gov website where we got a lot of this information. It's the most credible theory that exists and even it has its doubters. Right now, it seems that no one knows for certain where the virus came from. Ask around and you'll find that there are plenty of dumb answers. I think HIV totally has turned out not to be the cause of AIDS. HIV has turned out not to be. But there's no such thing as a dumb question. Oh, and by the way, while we're on the subject, go out and get yourself tested. Seems lately everything from the 80s is coming back in a big way. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, whatever your podcasting app of choice. Also, for a more personal touch, follow us on Facebook, where we go live every Sunday at 7 p.m. to premiere our newest episode and interact directly with listeners, including answering some of your follow-up questions. We hope to hear from you soon. And remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Yeah, we're back. And I think we're good. Hold up, hold up. Get sure our audio's coming through. Almost. I gotta turn it back on. <laughs> I'm a pro, you know? And this is exactly how it works out, right? So, if... if are we are we live? Are we heard? Check check. Can you hear us? Yep, we're good. All right, we are good to go. Good. So, we're back um, again. This was Cordero's first episode. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I know this one was longer than what we usually premiere, which are typically five minutes, but we are actually starting to ramp up to much longer episodes. Uh, so Cordero was sort of the catalyst to that. This episode, I think, ran about ten minutes. Um, uh, the episodes will be going to at least that and perhaps even longer moving right. forward. Um, so, you know, we, what we wanted to do when we brought this back was to sort of uh, touch on some of the conspiracy theories and any questions people may have about the about this episode about Magic Johnson, about uh, the AIDS virus specifically. And so we might as well go ahead and, and get into this as I have uh, oh, um, God. a friend from, from Ocala, from back home, who who is one of the ones that, you know, and rightly so in, in some aspects, she believes that the government is is um, hiding the, the cure for this disease um, from us. Um, you gentlemen have any comments on this? Specifically, I mean, um, I searched. Uh, oh, I searched. Um, I really wanted to find any proof of that, but I wasn't able to find anything that I saw that seemed to prove that. I was able to find a source that discredited it, so it was kind of hard to really put that out there and present it to the listeners as um, as something you know credible that we could stand on. Yeah. Now I, I can understand this because. You know why people would come from this angle because, as you say in the episode, there is, uh, you know, Magic Johnson's been alive for you know 26 years since he's announced that he's contracted HIV and yeah. he's been alive. And what's the one thing that everybody knows Magic Johnson for is that he's an NBA, play NBA player and that he's rich. Mm -hmm. So there's that natural sort of um, correlation that if he's rich, then that's why he's lived for so long. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily the case, and I don't think it's that he's able to maybe buy the drugs from from the U.S. government and they're keeping it from you. Um, I think it, it has more to do with the fact that he is a naturally healthy person, and as we've researched before we came onto this, the average age for somebody with HIV, um, their average life expectancy is really has really grown substantially. And it since, was caught on like. The, it was caught on really, really early, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very early. Because he's an athlete, he gets regular checkups. 
at you know the the musicians and rock stars and some of the um the older people who died from the disease early on they weren't really catching it as early as he did and he was very lucky with that you know the fact that also not only catching it early just the strain that he got was you know he had more opportunities to to uh, extend his life expectancy because there are different there are different levels you can um, you can get a harsher strain right off the bat you know yeah. so he kind of lucked out there as well. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, it, it, it doesn't necessarily present symptoms, is my understanding. So the average, yeah. you know, when we're talking about Freddie Mercury or Easy E, they probably, you know, didn't do anything about it until they felt, you know, some kind of symptom, and they go, they go and, you know, get themselves looked at, and that's when they find out, and it might have been, you know, however long. So. Um, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. guessing athletes regularly are tested, you know, especially for performance enhancing uh, drugs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I, I can totally see that. But the idea of the government uh, <laughs> keeping it from you, um, it, uh, usually you have to question is why would they do that? You know, I mean, not saying that the government's innocent, uh, but one, there is more than one government in the world. Two, we're not the smartest uh, government in the world, so how do you talk these other uh, countries into it? Um, and you might say uh, North Korea has it or something like that, but we don't believe them anyway. So, uh, but you know, then then why why would they be doing it? Uh, is it population control? Because there's plenty of stuff uh, that we are killing each other with all the time. You know, alcohol um, before prohibition. You know, it, I mean. There was no regulation of any kind. People made it, and now it is legal, and that probably kills way more people than not distributing this one drug when there are so many rare diseases. Um, And I can get deep into that. You know, I have some personal experience with that, but I want to focus on this. Um, It's just, it doesn't add up. It's, you know, the the population control idea, it it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the other conspiracies that, that people like to bring up is Cordero again, referenced in the show was that the government uh, sort of used this as population control against specific groups of people. So um, people that are disproportionately affected by HIV and AIDS, which would be um, African-Americans, uh, the poor, and uh, homosexuals, the LGBT community. Um, and we went over this, you know, we were able to find, you know, for instance, Louis Farrakhan sort of um, perpetuating this 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 conspiracy that the government was doing this to to uh, hurt African Americans and and again as Danny just said you know the, our government isn't innocent when it comes to affecting people specifically um, and throughout the course but for now. this what's that you just got us on a list somewhere now oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but it, it is very true but again as as Danny said, there's you know for this whole giant conspiracy to be taking place, that means there has to be this this almost infinite infinite amount of people that are a part of this conspiracy. Um, so correlation doesn't mean causation, and I think that's something that we that we really need to you know understand that just because there seems to be a correlation to something doesn't mean that that is the cause of it. Um, one of the other conspiracies that was only slightly referenced toward the end of it was that there this is actually one of the newer conspiracies is there's that there's an entire group of people that actually believe that not that hiv and aids was you know made to you know for population control but that it doesn't even exist it's something wow. that has what? never existed yes this is real so if you remember at the end of this this episode there's a clip and the guy says uh, I don't think HIV. I can't remember exactly. He says something to the extent of, "I don't think HIV is the cause of AIDS. I don't think HIV is," mm-hmm. meaning that he doesn't believe that HIV exists. Mm-hmm. And if you go onto YouTube, you can actually see just uh, tons of these these conspiracy videos of people wearing the guy, was it Guy Fox? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, masks. Uh, you know, saying that AIDS is is fake, and there's this big long documentary, with millions and millions of views of, you know, of people saying AIDS is fake, and you know, nurses from whatever little rinky dink 
uh, hospital they work at in North Dakota and saying, I've never seen any evidence of AIDS, things like that. And these really just sort of outlandish claims, mm-hmm. which is really offensive to people who have lost somebody to AIDS. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, um, it's sort of like in, in, you know, again, we have, um, you know, everybody's favorite conspiracy theorist in there. Um, uh, what's his name? You guys help me out from InfoWars. Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones. Alex Jones. So, you know, he's always, you know, putting these these conspiracies out there. And he's one of the ones that believes that the government, you know, put AIDS onto the populace. Um, but he's also one of these ones that says that Sandy Hook never happened. And these these conspiracies really are sort of damaging to to everyone, because if that little bit of information gets out there, and a lot of people start believing it. So it's so it just sets our the American culture and the people back in time because it's such stupid. And, and, and we were, you know, we respect you uh, thinking that, uh, you know, we won't agree um, on that case. And I hope that doesn't change stuff because we talk about a lot of stuff. And uh, I see N. Jolie is the one that put that uh, comment in here. And he said it was about having money. And I just want you to go back and remember uh, that. Yes, uh, Magic Johnson probably had a good amount of money, um, but Freddie Mercury had a good amount of money, and he passed away, and Eazy-E had a good amount of money, uh, and he also passed away, and and the list can go on. And and Magic Johnson's success, you know, as far as income, I I guarantee you, he probably made more money after that he was diagnosed. And and so I I just can't go with it's a money thing. There's plenty of people with plenty of money... um, that have passed away, you know. Yeah, the the money factor it kind of uh, begins and ends the same way it does with pretty much any illness. Is someone who makes more money has just better access to health care. So if you look at pretty much any illness, people who have less access are going to have a lower life expectancy than so, people who have the best care. You know, like so if you're if you're looking at these uh, these areas where you know the outbreak really exploded when it came to uh, drug use and things, people just did not have access to even the most basic HIV treatments. You know, so him being able to not only afford the treatment but be able to stay on the very strict regimen, like they have to take medication every single day. They have a very strict regimen for the medication that they have to take just to survive. You know, so someone who is well off and someone who has better health care and everything, like they'll be able to keep up with the treatments, but they don't have access to unreleased treatments or kind of classified treatments yeah. that and are being kept a, from everyone else. He's an athlete, so there is a, a set of discipline, but let's think about exactly how medication works. You know, even, I mean, we know the medication he takes, the, the antiretroviral um, mm-hmm. drugs. The way that insurance works is and I can tell you from personal experience that drugs can be crazy expensive, but you either have a max output where your insurance company will, will stop making you pay for, you know, maybe it's $13,000. And then after that, you know, then they'll start covering everything. Um, Mm -hmm. there is, there's preferred and generics, whatever, but, um, you know, regardless of how expensive it is, your, your plan usually has like a non-preference drug, for example, uh, and yeah. th- they'll charge you the maximum they can charge, which, you know, you know, in my personal experience, it's like a hundred dollars. Um, yeah. but the drug, I promise you is significantly more expensive than that. So, uh, I'm not an athlete and I don't plan or have AIDS <laughs> or plan to get it, but you know, if I had to get that, that's a hundred dollar drug for me probably, or, or 50 or 60. So now it does come down back to like, you know, some, some people have, uh, you know, decent enough benefits, but you know, they work minimum wage. So a hundred dollars out of pocket is, is a lot. So yeah. I can see that being an issue. But the point is, it's not like they're going to be like, yes, we have the drug. Here's the antiretroviral that you've heard everybody taking it. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, $30,000 a month or whatever it, it then there would be no purpose in drugs. And, and most yeah. um, pharmaceutical companies have assistant plans uh, themselves because they know how expensive it is. Um, and so they will figure something out for you. Um, if you don't have any more questions on that, I do have a follow-up for you, Cordero. Yeah, sure. Where did he get it from? And is he still married? <laughs> yes, he is uh, still married. Um 
it I could not find specifically where he got it from. Uh, there, there were uh, rumors um, of course. about who he got it from, but uh, nothing really concrete enough to, to run with. Yeah, that was actually something interesting. No one really knows. Um, you know, with Arthur Ashe, um, a lot of people don't know. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm completely guilty of this. I thought Arthur Ashe was gay. Um, turns out he was not gay. Um, he, he contracted HIV... Uh, AIDS through uh, blood transfusion because at that time in the 70s um, people weren't really checking for HIV and AIDS via blood transfusions so that's where he actually contracted it I, I learned that as we were uh, putting together the audio for this episode and um, so that one actually kind of caught me off guard if we're kind of staying on conspiracy theories but also touching on how these celebrities uh, contracted HIV AIDS the the most interesting one to me and I don't want to get too pulled off a subject but I think it's it's interesting is that there is a subset of people that believe that EZE was actually injected uh, with HIV AIDS f by uh, Suge Knight have you guys heard this one yeah Suge Knight actually started that <laughs> <laughs> he started his own the, rumor <laughs> the Jimmy Kimmel yeah, show that's uh, I saw the clip he said yeah, uh, there's, uh, Jerry oh, Heller yeah. I think He's. Uh, I think he said that uh, Jerry Heller had um, had injected Easy E or, or had injected Easy E with an AIDS needle, and that's how he got it. And then that, you know, just kind of you know spiraled out of control. But yeah, he kind of put that out <laughs> himself, oddly enough. Shook Knight. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah. Chris Beatty has has commented here that he believes that celebs get AIDS on a, at a higher rate than the general population. Now. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I, I don't have any numbers in front of me, but my assumption would be that celebrity cases of HIV AIDS are more prominent because they are celebrities. Yeah. So if it's somebody that, you know, if any three of us were to have ever contracted the disease, you know, that wouldn't really get around to too many people other than our nearest family and friends. Right. Yeah. But if it's somebody like, like Charlie Sheen or mm -hmm. if it's uh, Magic Johnson, that is world news. That's something we yeah. have pre press conferences to announce this. So that sort of gets out um, at, to a larger audience to, than than any of us or anybody that's um, watching the show right now. It's possible. I mean, you know, as you yeah. get bigger and famous, you know, it's not uncommon for drug use to get involved. Um, and, you know, hopefully they wouldn't share needles, but they might. And so maybe it does kind of happen but I, I still think it's more of you're you just hear more about it you know um uh, it's i don't know what else to say on that it's just like i i think it's oh. you know it's popular so you're gonna hear about it you know it makes news yeah. people like bad news i guess yeah that's one uh one thing that's uh always happens when it comes to celebrities i think people get just how many people there are that would be qualified you know that would be considered celebrities so, you know, you look at uh, today, um, was it that passed? Uh, Bill Paxton uh, passed today. So when was the last time people, like, thought about Bill Paxton, you know, like that? You know what I mean? Like, it's not somebody who crosses your mind every day. So when a celebrity dies or when a celebrity does something, then it becomes news. But when you take out, when you consider, like, how many people that if they died today, it would be news. Like, that's a lot more people than you would think, you know? So I think... Yeah. When something happens with those people, it seems like, you know, a celebrity in, out of a thousand, but there's probably like thousands of celebrities, you know, that would get that same reaction. I mean, we yeah, just and you have, passed up the, you know, allegedly the worst year of a bunch of celebrities dying in 2016, but, you know, mm -hmm. and there's no doubt that they passed, obviously, but yeah. is it more because, you know... 2015 and 2014 communication was growing to the point it is now so those stories get delivered um you know yeah. so even like c-list actors or dealers and not to discredit them or anything like that but people that you've seen once or twice you know i, I had to uh, stop for a moment and think oh, oh bill packs and bill packs oh yeah the, the guy in twister or whatever and so yeah. uh, maybe we're just exposed to more information now um and that is why we feel like more people die but it or you know or more celebrities are getting infected with AIDS, but the reality yeah. is it's just you're hearing about it more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and just to, to reference the 
the celebrity deaths in 2016, they actually did the number there, and they, they said that 2016 wasn't actually any worse for celebrity deaths than any time uh, before that. Uh, there's other years where there were more people that you would consider to be a celebrity that died. There was just something about maybe the stature of those celebrities that died in that year, and perhaps even the, the, the condensed time frame in which they died. Uh, but the total number of people that are considered to be celebrities, that number was no more um, above average than any other year leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Steve is curious as to, uh, is there any um, uh, celebrities that have died from AIDS recently? Um, and as far as I know, no. The the last one that I know that has been diagnosed, and you'll have to clarify, maybe one of you two, because this is something we need to actually get into, the difference between HIV and AIDS. And you went over this in the show. But uh, <laughs> just to get back to the point, Charlie Sheen. So Charlie Sheen is the last celebrity that I know of that has been um, diagnosed with HIV or, or, or AIDS. Uh, now, just to yeah. get back to the point that Cordero made in the show, that I think a lot of people are sort of ignorant of. And that's that HIV and AIDS are not the same thing. Mm-hmm. So if you have HIV, that's not a death sentence. That's not a death sentence automatically. And as we've said earlier in the show, there are people with HIV. If you're diagnosed with HIV early enough, say, for instance, you're in your 20s and you were diagnosed with HIV, uh, with the treatments that we have nowadays, you can live all the way into your 70s. So you can live a full and function life. It's when AIDS and the life is expected to fall. Because AIDS is, you know, that affects your immune system. So you can get something like the common cold and your body won't be able to fight that. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of what happens. Um, but I don't know if Charlie Sheen is HIV positive or AIDS or has AIDS, but that is sort of the difference between, you know, as Cordero said, check and checkmate. There's a little more to that, but you know, people have to realize that's another reason why Magic Johnson has lived so long. Because he's not he he does not have full blown AIDS. He he has HIV, and he's been taking the oh. medication to control it, which could effectively prevent yeah. the full AIDS virus from ever hitting him. Uh, besides, you know, yeah, exactly. Example. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the most significant the most significant factor in him still being alive is that distinction that I think a lot of people got confused because when they announce that someone, you know, has AIDS, they say HIV AIDS because it's, you know, the last stage of HIV. So it's it sounds to the public when all of these celebrities were dying that they, you know, had the same disease because they were hearing HIV. Even though Magic Johnson said in his press conference that he does not have AIDS, that he has HIV. So that that kind of caused a lot of confusion as well. And, and to go on the... Tr- Charlie Sheen, uh, the last update I can find was from USA Today in June of 2016, and just to read a little part of it, um, which kind of goes into the uh, being rich and having money for stuff, but he, and I'm quoting from USA Today, it's, uh, he also regrets his decision to briefly go off his regimen of anti-HIV drugs in favor of a controversial experimental treatment in Mexico due to the side effects of taking so many pills on a daily basis, basis, quote, that didn't go so well, end quote. He went so far as to describe Dr. Sam something, the physician who treated him in Mexico as a criminal and charlatan. He added he's hurting a lot of people and decent people. While on the experimental treatment, Sheen says his viral load went from zero to 7,000. And after resuming his previous regimen, which is the one that we all know about, the number dropped back into undetectable range. So here's another rich guy. Uh, who clearly has more money than you know he knows what to do uh, with, with yeah. his uh, attitude towards life, who you know took this experimental treatment, saw it go zero to seven thousand, said, "Okay, well this is not working. Let me go ahead and go back on the regimen," and got back to undetectable. So um, you know, food for thought. And then I, I think that's also a testament to just how strict that regimen is. That this is a guy who got this disease saw all of these celebrities, all of these other people die along the way. He knows just how deadly this uh, disease can be. And when he saw an opportunity to get something that might be a little bit easier than the regimen that he was on, he jumped for it. You know, so that just goes and to I show. I bet you it costs a ton of money. I bet you yeah. that costs a ton of money because there's no 
insurance, no benefits, nothing behind it. You have to go to Mexico, you know, to to get that treatment. So that, yeah. that's a good reason. And um, uh, Chris, Chris said uh, heroin is up, therefore HIV is up. I mean, heroin is up, methamphetamine is up. Um, I mean, I think anything that deals with needles. I I just think that what what's changed is you don't experience people getting uh, infections through transfusions and stuff like that, or the rumored stuff where like. Uh, yeah. someone's going to put AIDS on a pinprick and go around in a concert and poke you or whatever. Uh, yeah. And, and, and we probably should have got that number, but I almost feel like that's uh, potentially not enough, you know, the amount that you would fit in a tiny pinprick. So um, that kind of makes me think about Suge Knight's theory or whatever. I feel like yeah. you would need quite a bit. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, Easy e was passed out or something, and that's where you could do it, but... Um, I think there is a uh, misconception of how much of the virus is necessary to be infected, to be overcome by it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it makes a great point when you talk about the amount of people with heroin and that are taking heroin now. Taking heroin? I don't know. What's the, <laughs> what's the right word for that? Hey, did you guys take heroin using. today? Um, <laughs> using heroin. Oh, there we go. Real quick. Um, gotta take mine. You know, Okay, so <laughs> big bad guys, we got to go on a short heroin taking trip. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a great point there that the amount of people that are using heroin nowadays has correlated to an uptick in some uh, places to uh, a rise in HIV. Now, this has happened in actually a small town in Indiana, um, where you know this this small town had a bad heroin epidemic or also a pill epidemic and there were people that were shooting these pills up gross I think Cordero has AIDS it's been- <laughs> he seized all over me too you saw that? yeah <laughs> so so you know there's a lot of people that have been uh, using heroin and because this, they share uh, the story needle- while you're saying that is 20 minutes from Chris uh, oh. uh, in the comments on there. Okay, so he, he actually he, he's familiar with what we're talking about then. Um, I actually heard about this story uh, on an NPR show where they went and uh, they, they interviewed the people in this town and they had, a, they had an AIDS outbreak there, or an HIV outbreak because people were sharing needles. Now, the governor there, and this is Mike Pence, and this may also uh, be true for a town in Kentucky. You know, the idea of a needle exchange in the United States is just unheard of, and it's something that we don't do. But it's something that's very common in in the north. That and, a little bit. Okay, so a needle exchange is where people who are users of uh, of heroin or any sort of you know drug that you insert via needle, where they can get clean needles. And, and it's like no questions asked. Believe- it's not like you have to uh, sign up a form and say my preferred dr- uh, use, uh, exactly. drug of use is uh, this or that. Exactly. So it's no questions asked. And the reason for it isn't to sort of get people to use drugs. And th- that's sort of the the reason against it that some people in the U.S. use. If you allow people to get needles freely, they'll use drugs freely. But the it hasn't stopped them I now. <laughs> exactly. The idea behind it is if you is if you provide these clean needles to these users, it will prevent outbreaks of HIV, AIDS, and you know hepatitis, uh, any other disease that could be um, transmitted via needle use, via sharing yeah, needles. So in this, viral. yeah, exactly. So in this town, you know they had a they had a AIDS outbreak, and it was in an area, and it was amongst a population that was not used to having an AIDS epidemic. So this wasn't. Um, solely, you know, African Americans. So this wasn't a an LGBT community in this small town. This is white, rural, heterosexual males and females that were getting this disease because they were sharing needles. All it took was for one person to have the disease and then share that needle and then to pass it around. And then it could be passed around via, you know, sex or sharing of the needles, whatever the case may be. So this, you know, this uh, mayor in this small town had to go against everything that he thought was right uh, when it came to the needle sharing programs just to stop this disease from spreading. So this is something that the United States has to to really get a grasp on, and even in these smaller towns, because there is uh, an epidemic right now as far as heroin use um, 
in, in all across the states. I know there's a problem with it in Bradenton, Florida, you know, for instance, where, you know, I have some close friends that are, you know, managers and GMs of restaurants down there, and they've personally had to, you know, fire people because they were using drugs on their property in the bathrooms. Um, they would come into work high. So this is something that's really plaguing these areas, and, and it's just something that you the U.S. really needs to uh, get a grasp on. They need to know that providing needles – is not a, a way to encourage people to use drugs, but it's a way to prevent deadly diseases from spreading. Right. <clears throat> um, dang, that, that brought up a question. Let me look at this, some of these comments here. Uh, that's a good, uh, a good comment there where America refuses to view addiction as a mental health issue until that changes. The disease will continue to grow. That was Alan, you know? uh, uh, yeah. Alan Guilford, and, and that is we can yeah. just call him Josh. We can call him Josh. He, he confused me with that one. I always called him Josh. <laughs> it's a weird way to spell Josh. No, it was Alan. <laughs> no, no, all... I know it. Okay, okay, I know, I know him by the name. Josh, I'm so we'll just... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Addiction is. I mean, I see it in uh, in people in a way where they're not even addicted to. Um, to any kind of drugs but you see the behavior where they get into something and they just when they get into something they're zero to a hundred percent that that it's everything that surrounds them and stuff and i always joke with them like please don't ever try cocaine <laughs> you know because it, it's clearly like you're gonna be into cocaine if you start doing that stuff <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever like a part-time cocaine user you know it's it, it is one of those things if you're a part-time if you're a part-time cocaine user it's because you can't afford to be a full-time cocaine user. <laughs> um, and that's when you become a full-time crack user. <laughs> you know? Get cheaper and cheaper. Uh, oh, here's a great question by uh, Steve. And uh, it's, was Magic Johnson... <laughs> just said it like a, did anyone else here? I just used all S's in that. <laughs> okay. Was Magic Johnson ever prescribed medical marijuana to combat HIV or AIDS? Now, medical marijuana, I don't know for this for sure, but medical marijuana wouldn't combat HIV or AIDS. It would, uh, it doesn't combat any disease. What it does is it prevents the pain that that disease may, you know, uh, bestow on that person. So, it for instance, if somebody. symptoms of, of whatever symptom. disease you may have, but it's not a cure. Uh, and if yeah. someone told you that marijuana is a cure, then they're also on probably cocaine. And that's probably yeah. Dave Wolf, I think. Yeah. Who, yeah. I promise to reference David Wolf's dumbass every show that we do. <laughs> and oftentimes, uh, yeah. the, uh, the mar medical marijuana is not. It, do, it can uh, combat the symptoms of taking other medications. So, like chemotherapy, a lot of the symptoms of chemotherapy, um, medical marijuana will help with that, with the loss of appetite and with the pain and the discomfort and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's what people need to understand is that, you know, we just said it, but med uh, marijuana isn't a cure, you know. It, it is something to help relieve symptoms. This is why when it got passed in Florida just this past election, you know, it's it's for people with severe um, chronic diseases like glaucoma or or something like that or uh, what's uh, something that, you know, makes your body shake. So if you have seizures. seizures and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Words. Words are hard. Yeah, words are hard, especially when I'm trying to read and do this. So, oh, yeah, and, and Josh actually references uh, how Panama City Beach, um, which – you know how it has the third highest third highest uh heroin uh drug addiction in the entire uh area in the country he says and it's in, this the thing is if you notice there's a there's a sort of you know um there the these cities and these towns are all the other small to to mid sized places where they don't really have the uh, the places to go to to be able to help get help when they need it. Does that um, feel like it's hitting close to home? Who well, for me? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> you know we both went to high school to a very small oh. place, and I mean I always joke around, and but uh, you know in in Denellen, just to expose our location. Oh my god, <laughs> uh, what Cordero's right. I'm, I'm you know there's it, no problem with that. But um, you know like. 
in Denali High School, one of the popular things were uh, pills, for example. And it's a very tiny town. There's nothing to do. Um, I think you were even on the bus. Like, kids were way into, I mean, kids, us, I guess. I mean, I, I didn't do this stuff, but, like, loved whippets, which are so... Uh, uh, come on, man. <laughs> Two cocaine. I mean, I know what whippets kidding. are, but, but I don't... I mean, I don't remember that being an epidemic in high school of people <laughs> speaking back cafeteria to, to whip no, it with I the said it was on the green. bus. The same bus we both <laughs> rode. And I was like, the well, coolest thing to buy a can of Cool Whip or whatever compressed air, uh, you know, because before they didn't <laughs> put bitterance in it, and you get like this five second thing. But oh, I, you know, I do agree that it's a lot with a tiny town with, you know, it's probably a little more to do now, but there's very few things to do. Um, yeah, it's true. And so you go out and you, you know, you abuse these these things because of lack of entertainment or whatever it is. So, I mean, that's something to consider in a small town is like, uh, provide something for, for the youth there. So they're, they're busy, you know, not bored and, um, on the street doing some nonsense or whatever. It's very true. Yeah. And I think there might be a disconnect between the, the people that are running the town versus the, the people that are living in the town. So if it is a younger populace, but obviously the people, you know, your mayors and your city councils and things like that aren't really as understanding of the younger, younger people. They may, for instance, not have the, you know, the will to build a new playground to help give a place for kids to go play rather than just to get their hands dirty and, and whatever. Um, I want to go ahead. I'm going to read this from Dr. Franz Stevenson, aka John McCoy. I'm assuming it's a joke. I haven't read the entire thing, so I'm we, just we appreciate read this his like show. his like a uh, weekly yeah, we'll joke in our show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so John says, "I had the swine flu a few years ago after making out with a refugee. Our kids should know the risks before kissing strangers." In or immediately outside to the right of a shell gas station at the <laughs> the shell gas station, not behind the dumpster, not behind the dumpster, but between them on Mondays and Tuesdays at nine and ten thirty p.m. So, <laughs> thank you for your weekly uh, um, thank input, you, thank you, John, for that. And we know what we should absolutely be more cautious of who we're kissing behind the dumpsters. Mm-hmm. At the Shell gas station on Moon. Moon. Uh, <laughs> so if you know uh, someone that works there, please link them to this podcast where we put out the advisory. <laughs> um, quick break. Maybe Trump got it right. We should build a wall so those refugees can't come in to kiss John and get uh, Let me too. let me take a quick uh, stop because you know people have been in and out. Um, if you guys missed it, we played Cordero's first episode about Magic Johnson um, and how he's still alive. So that'll be up in iTunes. It, it might already be. Uh, we posted it earlier, so please go check that out um, to get a little more details. Uh, while you're watching this, you know we would greatly appreciate if you like our page. Um, it will help us uh, be discovered for other people. Um, as well as share this video uh, and this conversation. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. And also, let me say, his podcast don't cost anything. I had somebody say, how much does that cost? And I forget sometimes. So it, it is absolutely free to subscribe to us on iTunes and uh, and Google Play and Stitcher and whatever podcasting app comes on your phone. Just look for it. There's no such thing as a dumb question. We have about three, uh, four episodes now on there. Um, but... Uh, the yeah. biggest help for us is hitting that share button while we're uh, having these discussions. Uh, we're kind of liking this format, and we kind of have a meeting after this where we talk about that stuff, so maybe it'll uh, continue. Um, I just wanted to plug that real quick uh, and then uh, hit on Chris's uh, question of why hasn't Draco Serum uh, been pushed through the FDA? And I, I'm not familiar with Draco Serum, but I am familiar with the FDA and when it comes to drugs uh, um, uh, for um, for approval. And I can tell you this much is the FDA um, is very, very cautious. Um, there was, for example, a uh, company called Celtex, um, C-E-L-T-E-X, I think it is. And they were... They were able to do a couple of these treatments in the U.S., uh, but basically they'll grab uh, for autoimmune diseases, so any of them, there's plenty, but they'll grab your stem cells and, um, you know, like 300 of them, for example, and they will grow them in a petri, petri dish, you know, 
um, to I think it was like three hundred thousand or some something ridiculous, and then they give that back to you, which is kind of similar to how uh, other bone transplants work. Uh, but in that case, you're getting somebody else's uh, cells. Um, anyways, in this case, the FDA is dealing with it, even though. Is it really a drug when it's your own stem cells that they've grown? I think what what kind of gets shady there is that it's it was three hundred you know or three thousand of your stem cells and then they've grown them, um, and so the FDA kind of jumped in. It's like um, I think that's considered a drug, um, and so they've kind of put the brakes on that. Um, and the workaround, just for the sake of the story, is that you can now get this treatment by having your cells extracted here in the U.S. having your cells multiply here in the US and then they get shipped to Mexico and you go to Mexico to receive that treatment and in the autoimmune uh, world has been um, I think it's been pretty effective I'm still kind of like uh, on the fence of it because every time I read about it or see the testimony from a couple people on it I feel like it being pitched something uh, but these people are better from a rare disease um, so there's got to be something there so the FDA uh, basically told me you need to stop uh, doing the administration you can continue to grow and extract since that is not providing a drug um, and they are basically um, doing their you know long form tests which takes years it's unfortunate but I mean uh, you know we're, we're a huge country there's a lot of things to test I mean if you look at uh, in Florida, for example, there's a huge delay in processing um, uh, rape kits, you know, because there's so much to do. So these things take time, and um, I could only guess that uh, that probably has something associated with it, with where the testing is so extensive that they're kind of just going through it and, and waiting to see what happens. Yeah, you make a great point. Um, now, something we haven't brought up. Um, and Cordero, I don't know why you didn't have it in the episode, to be completely honest with you, because as we are on the Internet, people would like to know, how can we combat feline AIDS? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dog AIDS, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we were, when we were uh, setting up this, uh, this uh, episode, uh, this was the first time I heard that Ricky Gervais' stand-up bit, so if you guys haven't seen it... Gervais. Gervais. <laughs> Okay, GIF or GIF. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's the first... The, I'm not going to try to paraphrase it because I can't deliver a joke. Uh, but that's a, a, a good bit, you know, where where do you get AIDS from? It's like, oh, well, you either ate monkey. It's like, oh, nobody eats monkeys. It's like, oh, well, then you had sex with a monkey. I ate a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great bit. And, and just to go back to the show, so... You guys heard toward the end of the show, we referenced a um, Dave Chappelle uh, comedy skit, or not skit, but one of his stand up routines. Up, yeah. Where, yeah, where he was, you know, talking about, you know, scientists don't even know where where AIDS came from. Said scientists said, you know, we got AIDS when someone slept with a monkey. He goes, word, you know. And I don't want this to come off as, as Dave Chappelle being a conspiracy theorist. He's probably one of the smartest people in comedy. I don't believe that he is. But it, that's it was why great, he's good because he knows uh, what gets people laughing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, so there's a great, great bit there, and and again, what makes it a great bit, just to get into that for a moment, was that he was referencing the the you know how AIDS came to be, not making, not poking fun at people specifically uh, for having AIDS. Um, but yeah, no, it was great. So if you guys, I wish we could actually put up the link to these to these uh, videos, the, to the Ricky Gervais video where he's uh, commenting on AIDS, which, if I'm I might be wrong here, but he actually, he did a stand-up set for a cancer fundraiser, and I think that's where he told that joke, mm -hmm. so that's actually it's, We that's can't put the link up, we'll put it in this video in the comments so scroll down if you're watching this video now, and in the future there will be a link to a few of these uh uh, bits that we kind of just ran into in doing our research and <clears throat> I had a follow-up question I think uh, or, or a general question for you guys but I don't know if you've seen <sighs> the recent headlines um, about this and I am so guilty of doing the thing that I hate but uh, I think in preparation of this I kind of missed it but 
of a um, of finding people with uh, natural um, immunities to to AIDS, and then kind of exploiting that for the cure. Did you run into anything like that? No, no. Actually, I, I think it's didn't very come across rare. Any of those yeah, it's very rare. It's very small. Probably, you know, a weird third world country, um, and uh, there's a very small, I guess, percentage of women were found to to be. Uh, I guess it would be HIV that they were immune to. Since well, I don't know, mm-hmm. uh, but that's now, something this, to look this, into. Yeah, you know, um, I actually do remember hearing something about this, and it was a in a small. Uh, village somewhere in Africa, and I, you know what? There's a part of me that's actually not sh- sure if it was HIV or if it was Ebola, but either way, there was uh, several women there that seemed to have been immune to the effects or to the disease in general, and they were, you know, it was sort of it was sort of the the beginning stages of of you know, if we're looking at it from a grand scheme of things, the beginning stages of how diseases can be eradicated Mm -hmm. so just to kind of go into offshoot here you know for instance people who have developed a lactose tolerance right so the reason there are people in this world that have a lactose tolerance is because their um, ancestors were they developed this this tolerance to to lactose and they passed it on those genes so this is sort of the same thing that would happen in these villages uh, this in particular, this village in particular in in Africa, where these women, if they have this immunity to HIV or Ebola, again, I'm not exactly sure which disease it was. They'll pass those on to their children, and their children will, uh, you know, get those genes and then pass them on too. So that's sort of, you know, if people are curious as to why some populations have uh, this sort of immunity to to diseases that other populations don't. Um, this is the reason why, because, uh, for instance, uh, Europeans, there is a lower case for AIDS in Europe, and that's because many Europeans have a have a a gene that they developed after the Black Plague that actually inhibits, if that's the right word, um, them from getting HIV. Yeah. It doesn't completely uh, keep them from getting HIV, but it's sort of a something that helps prevent it. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, no, uh, Cordero, go ahead and just run over there if you need to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll go, I guess. Yeah, well, Cordero will be right back. Oh, you so got Chris pants on, asking, right? Okay, good. Chris is asking... <laughs> Sorry, uh, Chris is asking: Are we saying that this village is Ground Zero? Um, I don't think necessarily that this village is Ground Zero. I don't know. I don't have the information in front of me. There probably is a lot of information that has to come through before we can really say that this village is Ground Zero. What we do know, to the extent of what is Ground Zero for AIDS, is that most chimpanzee uh, population. We can get past all this noise. Cordero is just... <laughs> he can't even hear us. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, it's, like, it's like he's crumpling up a little bit of foil in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So just to get back to, to, to Chris's question, he was asking if this village where the, the ground zero was for AIDS, and I answered that to an extent, but also that uh, when it comes to the ground zero there's still th- that's something that's really hard to sort of define is where the ground zero point was for AIDS but they do believe through all the research that they've done that it probably did develop in a chimpanzee population somewhere in central africa and mm-hmm. there was somebody that that most likely uh was eating chimp meat and the chimp was in- infected and that's they, they you know got some of that blood into a cut or whatever and then that's how that person became affected from there. Um, when, as we can reference the the Ricky Gervais joke, you were either eating them or fucking them. I was eating them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, so much for the for the PG rated uh, episode. The Blew episode is PG rated, so if you want to share it with your kids, you can. This, no guarantees. <laughs> this is the yeah, discussion. No <laughs> Definitely fumbled the ball on that one. 
Um, and and to go back to Chris's, he kind of put a uh, too long, a TLDR, which is too long, didn't read for Shane. You, I know you just started the internet yesterday, so you're not familiar with the terms. Oh, that um, was a new one to me. Uh, OMF, OMFG? Oh my, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I'm but, still uh, I used to like use LOL as a way to say I'm laughing, which is apparently not even a real thing anymore. Usually you're lying about it. Um, I think we all are. But uh, to answer his, he, he kind of described, uh, and I'll read it for the people uh, viewing this in the future and don't want to go through it. And he was talking about that uh, serum earlier. It says, uh, MIT Lincoln Lab came out with serum that targets specific viral structures and destroys it without damaging others, tested in Ebola with effectiveness. And what this sounds like to me, and it might be a variation of it, is CRISPR, uh, which is C-R-I-S-P-R, all capital. Um which is something that is being tested on uh, right now, but uh, the way that works, which is what leads me to believe it's different, is you um, you are basically modifying genes and then getting your body to clone those genes that have been modified. Uh, and the way they modify is like blocking certain things, and I'm oversimplifying it. Uh, but uh, CRISPR is a good example of something that is um, rumored to be one of the future's like very effective uh, treatments for a lot of gene-based um, diseases. Uh, but again, it's uh, you know the FDA gets involved, um, and uh, I, I, wonder, I don't know what the the global um, agency that deals with that, but they're experimenting uh, with this specifically because. You know, if you can deal with genes, you can deal with a lot of um, uh, very harsh diseases. Um, so, and maybe it's related to that. And again, it's probably being tested like all hell, I guess. Yeah. So there's something that we need to you need to be careful about. Not you specifically or anybody, but when it comes to this, um, a lot of times these studies that these scientists are working on go out before they are ready, or it's really it's half information that has been captured and it kind of goes into this headline that these you know these news news outlets will pick up because it has it's a it's a headline that people want to read but the information in it is not fully there and it's not you know it's is always much more complicated than any of us could really understand so there may be something like crispr's but there's much more that's going on behind the scenes that yeah. they have so much more to work on so the so this you know this way to combat the disease may not be fully ready it may still be years off though they're working on it and that's sort of what you're hearing is that they're working on it but they try to pass it off as something being much more um you know prominent than it actually is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know it, it helps with funding um you know getting that yeah exactly there. exactly it does help with funding and uh, yeah. not too straight too far from Magic Johnson, but um, you know I just saw him on Jimmy Fallon a couple nights ago. Uh, nights ago, if you guys haven't seen that, um, do go check that out on on Hulu. It's uh, it, the guy's looking great. Um, yeah. What was I gonna say about that though? Yeah, so um, you know we also referenced this in the show that you know it was it was a great it it was sort of a serendipity is serendipitous. Can I use that? You know, yeah, that we would do this episode at the same time? Hold on. I'm getting Cordero, some, your, some audio. Yeah, your audio is kind of uh, funky. I'm wondering if uh, you might have to drop a call back in. Ah, uh, okay. See you guys. See you guys. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Breaking stuff. <laughs> oh. Um. um yeah. well, let's just see this part. We can. All right. Good to go? Good. Is that better? Not so much. <laughs> no. Let's uh, see. Is it oh, chop? Wait. Or is it low? No, it's uh, a little better. That's better. Yeah, we'll, we'll better? work with that. All right. All right. And we're okay. back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we were saying that it was, you know, it was kind of good timing to have this episode about Magic Johnson um, at the same time that he's back in the news. Um, he's now the director of basketball operations with the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, so it was just the right timing here. This wasn't planned, you know, as we, as Cordero said early in the episode, this was a, a listener submitted question. Uh, one of the first ones that we got. And so it just happened to be the right time that, that this question was answered. And, you know, that Magic Johnson was back in the news. Um, and I, I was gonna say, you know, I, I 
I find it funny, but not really, because I guess I wouldn't let it define me, but you can tell when you're watching that episode that, um, you know, he was in great health, and he obviously probably doesn't or didn't want to talk about his progress, you know, he wants to focus on what he's doing, but in just seeing him, I think, speaks for itself. It's like, you know, this guy is an example of if you follow what you need to do, you can you can live with this, uh, this disease a, a long time, which kind of, you know, besides the fact that you can infect other people, is it really a disease if you can li- live with it that long and, and not have yeah. any ill effects and take your medication? Obviously, it is a disease. It's a rhetorical question. You know, you can infect other people, which that's why I was asking if he was married because, like, that's got to put a strain on, on your marriage and... Um, you know, and you know, if you have yeah. kids or more kids, or you want more kids, um, you know, what, what, how you deal with that? It's funny because you know how we, and, and I like to share an embarrassing story every once in a while. But when I was younger, and uh, so yesterday, um, and ill-informed, uh, for some reason, and I think this was part of the fear that was used when it came to AIDS, and I swear it was right around the time that Magic Johnson. Uh, announced that he had the HIV virus was that you can get it by just mixing blood. And so in my head to about probably longer than I like to admit, it was, oh, this disease occurs when two different blood types get mixed. And then, and then I didn't think about the fact, wait, it's a virus. You you don't, it's not caused by that, but it's just one of those things that like, you know, somebody in in some sort of reporting or a teacher, I mean, I don't think a teacher would have done it, but said, hey, you mix blood this is how you get AIDS. And so like had the biggest fear of it for, for a long time, unreasonably, obviously. But I mean, I guess that's why I'm disease free. Right. Yeah. There was, there was a lot of mis- misinformation uh, going around, you know, at the time when this really became a disease that was, you know, uh, an epidemic across the world. And, you know, there were you know, TV shows uh, where you would see people you know, there was a um, a character in the movie who had AIDS and they would drink out of a glass and then someone else would take the glass and throw it in the, in the, in the trash because they mm-hmm. didn't yeah you know they, they had this idea that if you just share a glass with them you're going to get you know this disease or if you use the same toilet as them you're going to get this disease and all that is false um, I believe you can even it's there's there's stuff in your saliva that can actually prevent you from getting uh, any of these diseases if you kiss someone with this with these diseases but it's just sort of there's tons of misinformation that go out there and, and much of it's yeah. hearsay so somebody hears something so as Danny just said you hear that you know you get AIDS from mixing blood and, and now that goes out because there's somebody that takes what you say too literally or you know without that grain of salt um, and then the information yeah. just spreads you know so yeah I, I ask your doctors you know <laughs> it's like yeah. the, yeah. Don't be that person's like, yeah, I asked five doctors. They told me that, you know, I'm fine. But uh, David Wolf told me that it, the David aura Wolf. of AIDS is going to give me AIDS or whatever. Yeah. yeah so if there's one thing you're going to get from Cooties this episode is that avocado does not cure AIDS, no matter what David Wolf says. But it is delicious. So I'm going to eat some. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there was something that, that, you know, when we were kind of getting ready for this episode that we kept on talking about, too, which was the, the hysteria. What's that? The audio issues. The hysteria that we witnessed in the past couple of years when it came to Ebola or when it came to, uh, what was the other one? The mosquito one. The, uh, guys, Zika. you got to help me out here. Zika. Zika. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there was a big hysteria when it came to, to Ebola and Zika in these past few years and you know, if you ask the right person, this was going to be the fall of humanity. And um, I think a lot of us, you know, especially people that are that are watching this, uh, watching this live, uh, all mostly in the same age bracket. You know, somewhere from our early twenties to our mid thirties. So we don't really remember the eighties. But in the eighties, there was really just this this hysteria when it came to AIDS. People didn't know what it was about. They didn't know how people got it, as we were just saying. And if you can imagine, or you don't have to imagine, if that same sort of hysteria was to come to us in these sort of days. We witnessed it just a couple of years ago uh, when Zika and when Ebola came to be. Because we weren't even letting people fly into the United States that had this because we didn't understand it. Uh, yeah. We were quarantining people who had Ebola in their homes, who are now perfectly fine, by the way. 
they didn't die from it. I think in that entire time frame, there was one person from the United States that actually died from that. And I believe Steve, they had you know, other three, three kids. Oh no, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. I read that completely wrong. My mind just went ahead and read that. Steve did not say Philadelphia was a great movie for kids. He says it was a great movie about kids. <laughs> uh, I believe the the person that did die from the Ebola had um, it wasn't necessarily already a healthy person. I think they had a prior condition that exact or that got exaggerated from from the infection. Um, <laughs> agreed. Um, agreed. Um, but uh, kind of touch on Magic Johnson, um, you know, besides this, uh, Laker thing, you know, I kind of want to point out that, um, he's doing pretty good and, uh, I don't know, you don't, you don't have to worry about that stuff. Just get tested. Do, do, did you get any info on the best way to get tested? I mean, just go to your doctor, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of clinics uh, from when the in the 90s when they when the outbreak really exploded um, a lot of clinics started uh, doing the AIDS testing and uh, blood testing so it might you might have to pay for some places but a lot of places still do it free so it should be within reach yeah and and I believe um, and I might be wrong but I remember I had a uh friend from down in Miami, which I don't think he's watching, but it'd be cool if he was, and uh, he kind of did the data entry for that, and always got people to come out and get tested, and I believe it's just a cheek swab, so it's not like they have to draw blood if you have uh, fear of that, mm-hmm. and uh, and I believe they have a mail-in kit as well, so if you are sexually active, and uh, you know, it's, I, I don't see what it would hurt you to get that mail to you. Um, have it tested yeah. and send it back because living, uh, working in the in criminal uh, law, um, I do understand that I believe it is a felony not to uh, <laughs> advise someone that you have the uh, AIDS virus. Yeah, that's something interesting. FTM, so, yeah, but, that's something actually uh, pretty interesting. Now, this was a couple of years ago, um, but on YouTube, there was a, a gentleman that went on there claiming to have AIDS. And and then started listing all of the the women that he slept with, and oh. I think that you know there was a big campaign to to find, find out people? who this guy was. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if anybody like uh yeah uh, was remembers it a YouTube that. pranker? Because I mean they're getting and, hands, well. You know so. what? I think this was this was oh yeah. We can do a whole episode on YouTube pranksters. I absolutely loathe those people. I I I hope <laughs> every, well you, you know well, we're getting off on a tangent, but I hope every time. I watch a YouTube prankster that he's just going to have the crap beat out of him. But it turns out everybody in the video is their buddy. So if they do get the crap beat out of him, it's all part of the setup. They're yeah. a bunch of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris is right. If you don't know, you you have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, anything we want to touch on this? Because I feel like we can... We've kind of hit the nail on the head uh, and um, you know if we're missing anything please go check out that episode it's uh, in, on iTunes just subscribe and you can listen to that you can listen to uh, my episode about uh, anthropomorphizing things you can listen to uh, Shane's two episodes about being frustrated and his use of dopamine we all use dopamine I don't know if you know that but if you go listen to that episode you can ex- it can explain to you how uh, you are addicted to dopamine if you don't know that uh, but yeah, please cool. check this out and if not uh, we can talk about you know future plans and kind of like you know head to closing or we could talk some more it's up to you guys <laughs> well, you know we just got a great comment from Chris who's been you know joining with us this entire show he says that this you know, this is entertaining that's what we shoot for um, we know we usually don't get that, that serious but yeah, you know, and, and just to, to touch on a few things, you know, since we've started this podcast um, recently, you know, first off, this great comment from from Chris saying that this show is entertaining. It's really appreciated. We put a lot of work into this. You wouldn't believe the the anxiety all three of us had leading up to this because the episode that we premiered wasn't fully ready until about I don't know what forty five minutes before we aired. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we work really hard on these. This is all sort of a, uh, this has been a goal and aspiration for us um, for a long time now. You know, 
uh, Danny and I really started working on music together in high school. And then, you know, for the past, what, seven or eight years now, Cordero, you and I have yeah. been off and on working on, you know, writing scripts for movies and television shows and things like that. So mm-hmm. for us to actually, all three of us, you know, with me being the, the joining link here, uh, um, to actually have something now that is on iTunes, that's on Stitcher, that's on Google Play Music, um, tune in radio. I can I can <laughs> yell to my Alexa, play There's No Such Thing as a Dumb Questions podcast. Let's play the program called There's No Such Thing as a Dumb Questions, right? Yes. Let's see what episode comes on. She can't get no she can't get it right now because I pluralized <laughs> it again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's my fault. For some reason, I like throwing S's, as you heard earlier. I think I call it Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Um, <laughs> so that's that's my fault. But yeah, just saying that we put a lot of work into this. You wouldn't believe it. And I know that everybody gets inundated uh, from from their musician friends, from their at this point model friends and things like that. These yeah. these people that really you know that are trying to you know have these goals and aspirations to so, to do something big. And so you just kind of get from all different angles people trying to get you to follow them watch them listen to them and for you guys to join us today we're really appreciative um i recently yeah uh, i recently received a, a private message from a friend of mine who listened to one of my episodes who said that it was something that really uh spoke to him because he was going through some frustrating times and kind of helped him put things into perspective and just to get that message really meant a lot to me because it made me know that what i was doing even though it's not getting heard by thousands upon thousands of people but it it really was hitting home to somebody and if there was one thing that i could get from this i would rather get you know the, a great comment from somebody on a personal level than a thousand views from people who have no no comment on what we're doing whatsoever and what we like to do a little different in a podcast is that we you know we like to interact with people because people as you saw here brought awesome comments and we don't know everything we don't claim yeah. to know everything um, in fact, uh, I fully expect to be told how wrong we are <laughs> multiple times. Uh, but it's like, you know, it's like a hangout. You know, you, you, we all live in different places. You know, uh, Cordero lives in his bathroom. Uh, Shane right. in Dallas. I live in, in, in Florida. But, uh, you know, we want you guys to be a part of this and hang out with us. And the biggest thing you can do for us right now as we try to grow this is, uh, hey, quit poking me. Uh, I was trying to point to it. I don't know if Cordero has noticed here in the bottom. Well, I'm in Dallas, and then Cordero, yeah, yeah. you are in, in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest thing you do for us is is like our page, um, but uh, share it out. We just want uh, people to check it out, and if it sucks and they you know they hate it, then cool. You know, uh, hopefully we didn't waste too much of your time, and. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and if not, then, you know, we'll get a couple more listeners because the whole purpose of the show is to answer your questions. Uh, we exactly. have, uh, I, I don't know how many more in the pipeline uh, as far as questions, but uh, this is the part where I, I annoy you by saying, if you got a dumb question, uh, then don't hesitate. Uh, send us a message, post it on here or whatever. We have an anonymous form. If you need it, you can send me a message about the anonymous form. And so we can get that uh, ready because uh, we're still learning our workflow, how much time it takes to research these things. We don't know all these things. We kind of just, you know, if you know the answer, that's fine, too. We, you know, it might just lead to interesting conversations and you wanted to bring it up. Uh, but, you know, think, you know, think big or whatever. Uh, but just share it uh, and uh, and leave us um, uh, a comment on how you think things are going. And I'm repeating myself. So uh, next thing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, it's it's what's great about this is I you know we we can see who's who's joining the the show as we do this and just as you know just now uh, Tiffany in San Jose has joined Irma from Veracruz Mexico is on here a uh, friend Oscar and Abel they're from uh, Panama and Venezuela Hola. are on here you know and you know what I I keep on telling Danny that I want to do an episode in Spanish. Um, or at least in Spanglish, um, you know. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> so it's just it's yeah. really awesome to see you know everybody join us on this. And if you are just joining uh, earlier today, 
we premiered Cordero's uh, episode. Um, I believe we named it Do You Believe in Magic, which is all about how is it Magic Johnson is still alive after 26 years of being, after his announcement of having HIV. So this is, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, Where? And our setup is to do an episode, like we said earlier, that was PG-13 that you can share and not be afraid of um, the languages. And then Sundays we discuss where things, anything can happen, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, probably not for kids for the most part. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so a reminder to anybody who's just joining the show, um, we are on iTunes. Uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. iTunes, Google Play. Um, Stitcher. Tune in radio, Stitcher, SoundCloud. If you want to go there, and we do put up um, versions of it on YouTube uh, as well, just so that we have all uh, outlets covered. So, with that being said, when I say all outlets being covered, you know, I um, when we released episode two, episode two was released uh, after Danny told me about this other um podcasting duo still the best came up... beginning of our episodes it's awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he he uh there was this podcasting duo from i believe they are a combination of out of alabama and wyoming and they came up with a show called no dumb questions which obviously is very irritating to us as we are there's no such thing as a dumb question um <laughs> And, you know, in the in the frustrated episode, I said in there, you know, I have one of two options. I can go to Alabama and I could punch this guy in the bleep uh, or Throat. we could focus this energy and 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 beat them at their own game. And I think that's what we're doing here. We've definitely focused our energy. It was just a few days after that we went on. Uh, we got onto iTunes. We got onto Stitcher. We got onto Google Play. We got on to tune in. And we just keep on, yeah, big hands to Danny on that one because he really was the, yeah. the person that sort of took that. No, and then knowing I that literally we had hands on my shoulder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then we also, you know, we brought Cordero on and Cordero came out swinging with his first episode. Danny came out with his first episode. And, and we're not stopping. We're not going to stop using this name. If they're going to try to take that name and run with it, they're going to have to fight with us first. Because if you go on to iTunes right now and you search for No Dumb Questions, yeah, their show comes up, but so does ours. It's right underneath there. So I want you guys to, you know, I don't know I don't know these guys personally. And as I'm talking, I'm starting to sound like a wrestler a little bit. Like, come on, brother. <laughs> See you next Sunday. No Dumb Questions hours, brother. Uh, <laughs> Um, but we're going at these guys head to head and we do not have the budget to really keep up with them. This isn't a point in the show where I say, if you can donate just the price of a cup of coffee, you know, um, nothing like that. Uh, but I just want to, you know, we're going up against them. They've got a lot of money. They have, you know, time and we don't have that, but we're still going to give them a challenge. We're not going to roll over and let them just take this, this yeah. idea, this concept and this name because we're putting too much work into it to do that. Yeah. And it would be, it would be kind of a bad for you guys because if you're hopping in here just to, just to join the show to watch us, then, I mean, you obviously care about what we're doing. So we're not going to give up on this for you guys. Yeah. So Tony Lima sure. from Tampa just joined. Hello, you Tony. Having fun, man. Yeah. If you, you should go check out the last live episode if you are just watching this because Shane had to do it from a vehicle in a parking lot <clears throat> and <laughs> if you look at this guy you would be like why is this guy wearing a fancy suit with the light on side of excuse me a vehicle and so security comes and pulls him out of the vehicle and severely beats him but he's healed really really well uh, yeah that's why my hilarious. face is all swollen actually <laughs> Uh, that's why he had to get that haircut. Yeah, you got no. a haircut, didn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to get this haircut because I have uh, I have court coming up, and I had to look as white as possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Uh, but go go check it out. Uh, it's fun. We we like to hang or whatever, um, and, and do this. And if you like the format, uh, then you know we'll keep doing it. 
Uh, yeah, releasing yeah. one show every week. That is the that is the objective. And if we fall behind on that, then you know, let us hear it because you know I don't think it should be too difficult. I, you know, we talked about the anxiety that all of us had getting to this point. You know, just to release this episode and to get all set now. up. Yeah, but it's so much fun. It, it really is a lot of fun. So, you know, if it takes all that same anxiety, you know, weekend and week out to make sure that we get an episode up for you guys, then then that is what it is because we're not making any money from it. But I I sure love doing it. We're I enjoy it. Yeah, I have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, and we're happy you finally get. You know, now we're going person to person here, but I'm happy you you got this. You know, under, uh, same with you, Danny. You know, with the the episode before. You know, it's two to it's two for me, one a piece for you guys. But uh, <laughs> it's even. One was ten minutes. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, well, that's you. John McCoy uh, said, "Is this a good episode for a meatball recipe?" It is because. Um, for if you want to make an awesome meatball sub and this is real so and you don't want it to (laughs) like the problem with meatball subs uh one if they're from subway they smell um like old beer so don't get it from there but if you're making your own uh the trick to keep the bread from getting soggy because that is highly annoying for me soggy bread is line the sub with salami and then put the meatballs and the sauce and the cheese so good there so, really is no such thing as a yeah. dumb question because we just yeah. we just do that. I would love to actually take uh, questions from listeners right now. So if you guys are listening to this, yeah. Johnny, who just joined us, who lives in Bradenton but is originally from Brazil, he um, he all just joined us. So Johnny, yeah, <laughs> his phone number is nine five four. No, um, but if you know anybody who's watching this now, we actually still have a decent amount of viewers at this minute. If you have a question. Please uh, let us know what that question is. I want to hit um, Chris's question. It's actually so good that I almost want to save it. But his question says, "Why don't they make flesh tone or nude band aids for black people?" Is that a dumb question? I was like, Cordero, we'll let you handle this yeah. one as our resident black. <laughs> <laughs> as the rest, <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Uh, someone uh, brought that up in an interview that I saw, I think, about two years ago, and I always thought it was pretty interesting. Um, because uh, I think it was Donald Glover, he was doing an interview, and the host didn't realize that um, Band-Aids were the color of skin. So he kind of just, like, brought that up. And, yeah, I, I kind of do want to know that. And I wonder, uh, what do Band-Aids look like in China? So That's a good question. I went throwing out dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. They probably have Hello Kitty on them. <laughs> I imagine that. That's, that's my. That's my. Jonathan that's says good. Rob Rocker is king. That is not really a question, Jonathan. Um, that is a comment. Um, but yes, Rob Rocker is king. Unless it's Rob Rocker is king, in which case he not not of the not of the village that I live in. <laughs> so sorry. He is the king. He's the king of the flying V guitar, which. Uh, I know Rob personally, so yeah. <laughs> so you can say whatever you want from him. We aren't ready for your dumb questions. Listen, man, if 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 they get us uh, talking and and uh, and uh, and they lead to to great conversations, then even if we get them wrong, it was fun, right? Uh, <laughs> Steve King does make a point. It is false. His name is Steve King, so. Oh, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see you, King. So, yeah, I guess he makes a valid point there. <laughs> we had some, I mean, we'll, we'll, while you guys kind of, because um, there's a delay, so while you guys think of the uh, weird, dumb questions, there was that. Did we ever talk about that weird one from a, we got it on our Facebook page from a dude that doesn't have anything on his um, profile and disappeared, disappeared, and it was related to AI. And like, I was thinking about the other day. I'm like, what if that dude was AI? What if it's not a yeah. person? <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and take this. 
the the very first time we did a live episode, which I'm talking about, it was oh, you know, 30 years ago. Now this is what two weeks ago. Sure. Uh, we did our first live episode, and randomly within that, we got a a, a Facebook private message from someone I can't recall the name, but he asked, "How do we feel about the rise of AI and it taking over?" Um, uh, like someone's love life or something like that. What was so interesting about that was is just the day before I watched a show called Minefield on YouTube with uh, um, Michael Stevens as the host. He also hosts Vsauce, and he covered that exact subject, which made it very, very strange that this random person would ask me this. Um, but in it, they covered you know these games that people play now, where they get into these digital relationships with you know computers. Uh, on their phones and there was one guy in particular in california that fell in love with his device he wouldn't play any other games on this device he wouldn't play tetris or anything like that because to him he felt like that was cheating and he said clearly that if i you know if i could marry this device i absolutely would he didn't seem like a crazy person at all uh by the way he just you know he fell in love with a with a nintendo ds Apparently, is that the plot um, of her? <laughs> <laughs> it may That's be exactly the plot of her. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you guys can go into that. I'm not. I'm not the movie buff like you guys. I didn't watch it. I just you know seen the trailer. I you know, the earlier we were um, we were pretty much setting up the plot for Footloose when we were talking about uh, <laughs> the older people in the town needing something for the young people to do to keep them out of trouble. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> the plot from Footloose. All right, yeah. so, okay, Tony Diaz did come up with a question here. He, he, first off, he got uh, hacked by Rob Rocca. Uh, but the question is... <laughs> uh, the question is, why does Rob eat chicken? Chicken wong? With a like knife and a he, fork. Does he eat it wrong? Is wrong. That he, must be, he must be wrong. Why does he eat chicken wrong with a knife and a fork? Uh, my My simple answer is that he probably doesn't want to get... <laughs> he probably doesn't want to get his hands dirty. Um, the the longer answer on this would be, uh, I don't know. We, uh, see, again, man, I can't do this PG. I can't do this PG, guys. Tons of jokes run through my head, but they all involve <laughs> touching somebody's penis. <laughs> I can't say it. PG. So I said, <laughs> you know, it's the live episode. We'll have to put on a separate feed if we do upload the audio of this stuff. And you know it's it's whatever it's. What I need is an automatic bleep button that would help me out. <laughs> you timed yeah. it wrong. <laughs> well, this is actually really crazy, guys. I don't know if you saw this, but John McCoy actually dated Cheryl Laurel, uh, Cheryl Laurel Bush in uh, I think third grade. So that's I mean if if we can that's crazy, that's crazy. It's not a question, but I just think it's really cool. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Back. Okay. <laughs> Here's another one from Chris. How do you guys feel about the news of a trans boy winning the state championship in girls wrestling while taking hormones to change male? Cordero. Wait, what? How do you guys feel about <laughs> okay, right. the news of a trans boy, biologically female, winning state champion in girls wrestling while taking hormones to change to male? Um... Confused first and foremost, um, intrigued. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what where to go with that. <laughs> I mean, is that a real? Story? No, it is. I saw. I saw that, and I. I mean, so so I, I look at it two ways. Um, as far as uh, the person want to make that choice to change sexes, then I, you know whatever, not my problem. It's you know more power to them. But the question does come up of, uh, is that considered performance-enhancing drugs? I think that is really the intriguing question. Um, but I, I, my understanding was the hormones taken for a uh, transformation of that kind, I'm using the wrong word, I'm sorry, um, is, uh, is not the same hormones that you take for... Uh, performance enhancement, necessarily. But... Uh, yeah, would that be considered cheating? I don't know. I mean, uh, these are awesome questions yeah. that are going to come up, uh, you know, in 
today's day and age and someone's gonna have to decide you know if you want to make that change that's fine but you'll have to complete your change before um being involved in in a sport where your performance can be uh modified by these drugs you know that's a great point i think um you have to you know there's there's other questions to ask there now this is a someone in what what grade was it uh, grade? What grade was the? Uh-huh. Yeah, do we know? I don't know. I, I just saw this is, a, this is my first time hearing about this. I just saw a picture of it. Um, I, I would assume uh, high school or or maybe even um, like uh, college level from the photo. Yeah, so I would think that maybe it it much of it is it's it's one of those questions that's really hard to answer. And if we were ever to do an episode on this, you'd have to really dive into it because the things that I would want to know is. You know, um, you know. After somebody completes their hormone therapy, are they as strong as the sex that they are transitioning to, um, or do they retain the strength of the sex that they were at birth? You know what I mean? I, I don't know about um, that because um, I know girls that can kick my ass anytime. So <laughs> I, I I can share a couple stories with you where I got a. Uh, beat in basketball by a girl and this wasn't like I was a fifth grader we, I, this was after after high school she completely was hit, she was hitting Magic Johnson jumpers on me hooks and, <laughs> hooks and all made me look stupid and then one time as a bouncer a very tiny girl who was upset that I wouldn't let her in caught me off guard pushed me over onto the steps and made my shoe pop off <laughs> And she was probably one third the weight of me. So you know it's yeah. serious when the shoe comes off. That like that is yeah. My <laughs> shoe popped off. It was like that scene in Pet Cemetery where the little boy gets hit by the truck, <laughs> <laughs> and the potatoes fall all over the place. <laughs> the shoe was just sitting there, and I was. What, just what do you do at that point? You just like get in. I mean, I laughed. You- I, she kept on going. So I just I just sat back and laughed. There was nothing. I think I you just have to go home at that point, right? <laughs> you, you go to your boss. It's like, hey man, I, I really got to go home. It's like, what's wrong, Shay? What's going on? It's like, just you know, uh, some personal stuff going on right now. I got to go. <laughs> Plus, you lose all authority with every everybody. That was there. <laughs> I had no authority over anybody at that point. Um, okay, I got a question question from Rob here, and uh, I'm gonna give this one to uh, Danny. Uh, why do you want to punch someone in the face when you hear an ice cream truck? Um, this goes back to being, you know, like eight years old or whatever and hearing the ice cream truck and then going into your, like, mom's closet, finding the, the stash of money and taking, like, a couple bucks, getting ice cream, and like, yeah, this is awesome. And then your mom gets home and beats your ass for staking money because she's a Hispanic woman and you just took money from her. And so now, the next day, when the bu- uh, the, the ice cream truck comes around, you're like, freaking, I want some ice cream, but my mom will beat my ass, so no thanks. That was definitely more of a specific answer than we were looking for. Cordero, oh, okay. your turn. <laughs> I just thought like, I want to punch someone in the face when I hear the ice cream truck. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, that song sucks. <laughs> <laughs> For real, it's, it's 2017, and we can't like find something else to play. I mean, you can find non-copyright music everywhere that you could use and replace it with. Like, how is it not Hotline Bling at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Is that not the perfect ice cream truck song? <laughs> my, this is my cane hang low. Oh, man. Um, yeah, well, if I had to take a shot of that, um, if you wanted to beat someone up when you hear that uh, song, Rob, it's probably because you have autism and loud noises trigger you. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel you, bro. I feel you. Um, let's see. Oh uh, man, we got some, I got Jorge uh, Moreno that joined us from Better Cruz, Mexico as well. He can't understand a word that I'm saying, but Hola, hey. Jorge. Um, <laughs> este programa en inglés. Perdón. Sí. <laughs> I just this program in English. Sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and perhaps Chris says, Rob, perhaps you are 
uh, programmed by the KGB, and anytime you hear the the ice cream music, you are set off on a mission <laughs> to kill the president. And now we are <laughs> describing the plot of Fugitive. Wait, is it Fugitive? Uh, the one about I thought it was what? Captain America: Winter Soldier. That too. <laughs> it was, was it Fugitive, where the dude was like programmed to always check out a certain book from the library? I am messing up my movies right now. This is embarrassing. Or I made that movie up. It's an episode know. of Family Guy, yeah, so. <laughs> it's an episode of Family Guy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, let's see. Any more questions from anybody who's listening to this? Please hit them with us. We're actually having a really good time doing this. This wasn't on the original agenda, but, um, you know, it, it's fun to get people to join in. Oh, we got some likes. Look at that. That was me. <laughs> Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, because I noticed that if you tap it a few times, it comes up a bunch of times. I was like, what? You can do it more than once? Hey, can can some of you guys give us some emojis? Let's do the let's do the crying emoji so it's <laughs> it's really weird when we look at the <laughs> analytics like this. Just everybody hit that cry emoji just a bunch of times. Or, like you're super yeah, sad. Or, oh, yeah. oh, 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 I, I got a question. I got a question for you guys. Um oh, there we go. I, got one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very sad. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you, you're coming. <laughs> give that guy the suicide hotline. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know, uh, uh, Cordero. I'm sorry. We should probably know each other a little better if you're married or have a, a girly friend and such. And if not, yes, I am married. You. Okay, cool. Um, and, or Shane, <laughs> if you've had this yet, um, later, Steve. Nice to see you. His phone is dying. Oh. Maybe it died already. Hi, Steve. Thank you, you can, for joining You can us. watch us later, you know. It'll still Video. be here. <laughs> so, yeah. question for you guys, though, for real. Okay. Um, has any of your wives come to you about this live YouTube video they keep checking on? And on that live YouTube video, it's a giraffe. Yes. That, uh... <laughs> that did come up, and I was wondering what that was about. Are they waiting for it to give it's, birth? Yeah. So it is a live what video you feed. What come out of it? A panda? Is it going to be just a baby giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> like, it is. It is a is a giraffe in New York uh, who's currently pregnant, and the post has been up for three days now, live streaming almost nonstop. And it says any minute now she's having a, a a baby. Which first of all, we all know that the Facebook video feeds algorithm shoot up. So I'm like, are these people straight up lying? One, but two, uh, I know they're not lying. But two. What is the obsession? My wife, I'm kind of calling her out on this, but hopefully I'm not in trouble. Um, she got up like at three in the morning, you know, to, you know, because you get up or whatever. And she's like, I got I to gotta go check if this baby's born yet. And just watches the feeds for a few minutes in the middle of the night just to see where this baby's, <laughs> this baby giraffe is born. So my question is, why is that so interesting? Why, why are we, we have to, you know, why are we getting obsessed with that? What makes that viral? What makes that interesting? Or am I just a heartless person that, you know, doesn't understand? <laughs> I'll let you guys answer that because I don't have a, I don't have an answer for it. My girlfriend is watching this in the other room, and ask I have her. a statue of a giraffe. She can bring me that. Well, ask her. Watch her be like, yeah, I know what he's talking about. You know? <laughs> she might be watching it. All right, go on, go on, Cordero. So you got a, you have an answer here, or? Well. Um... When my wife brought it up to me, she said that everyone was paying attention to this. And obviously, when someone says everyone's doing something you're not doing, you say, no, everyone's not. <laughs> That's not That's a good point. <laughs> so um, I did uh, look into it, and I just saw a giraffe walking around a cage. And, That's it. You know, people saying, yeah, that was pretty much it. And she said, like, oh, it's going to give birth. And I'm like, it's live, though. We have the exclusive. <laughs> here is baby April, the giraffe, born right here. I want you to share this video out and say, giraffe is born. And it is on this video at the, what is it? Uh, one minute and 49 second mark. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just... Oh, oh, oh. oh God. What Santa? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a weird shirt. She's beautiful. <laughs> wow, that's a huge draft. It's like, yeah, no, really it is. This is that section that Cordero's mom shops for in, in Marshalls where it's like all <laughs> My mom was a tiger lady. <laughs> 
<laughs> she knows. She knows. Uh, wow. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay, we have some questions that that we should probably uh, get to. Uh, Rob asked, "Why do people believe in Trump?" Now we may have our own sorts of uh, political uh, leaning one way or the other, so we won't touch on that. But let's let's answer the actual question here on why people believe uh, believe Trump. Um, now I'll take a shot at this. I think that you know, uh, for some people, they they want to have someone to look up to, and when that person is a is a leader. Uh, or is the elected leader of something, uh, and they share and they share their views, then they tend to maybe not. Um, um, they they take everything that the, this person says without seeing the full picture, and I may be uh, on the other spectrum of that. For instance, when when I was an uh, Obama supporter, and there may have been many times where. There was maybe something that he signed off on that I would find myself defending, even though not really knowing the full story of what it covered. You know what I mean? So I think that's maybe what it is um, that, you know, we're not all in this country uh, um, under the same umbrella. We have different leanings one way or the other. And even though we don't, I personally don't like uh, the guy. Um, there are definitely people who he spoke to. He spoke to them directly, and they they saw that in a way that they hadn't seen him from anybody else before. So it kind of gives them this this leniency toward him to kind of you know take what he says a little more literally. What do you guys think? Um, I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit simpler than that. Um, I think. When you look at the language that Trump uses, the specific words he'll always use: biggest, best, your, you know, greatest. Your your audio's yeah. cutting up. <laughs> no, it's cutting up. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to shut you down. Here, let me let me answer, and then uh, maybe it'll clear up while I answer. So collect that thought, and I'll and I'll kind of hit on it for a little bit. And um, I, I like to think that uh, people don't blindly uh, believe everything. You know, everybody has a, a spectrum, but I, I do believe that we all have our internal biases, and so we try to fit. Uh, we have our own narrative, and we try to fit everything into our own narrative because. Uh, and this happens on both sides of the aisle. It's, you know, you, you believe in something. And so when a uh, leader talks about something that you are not familiar with, um, you, one, try to fit it to the narrative that you're accustomed to. And two, um, we, you know, we may not know the subject matter, but because we look at them as a leader, we just take that opinion uh, as like, well, this is my leader and I'm not familiar with this, but if he's about that, then that's what I'm going to be about. And I think that's where it gets a little dangerous, um, even though I, I truly believe that both sides of the aisle uh, do this, um, because um, then you're not building your own thought. You're just kind of accepting uh, what it is. And, and I'm not surprised that... Um, you know that that you might just take that, uh, but I, I encourage you, like I did in that one episode, to think critical, to think of the specific subject matter, and to see if one you believe in what he's doing or what he proposes, and two is that the right thing to do in your in your point of view, and not to be afraid of saying, you know, I support these things, but this is wrong, and I'm going to stand up for this thing that I believe is wrong, or that the solution is wrong. Um, you may. You know, th there's two parts of everything: is the problem and the solution to the problem, whether you agree or not. So, um, you know, personally, uh, it, it, every uh, there hasn't been a single uh, president. I mean, I'm only uh, thirty something years old, uh, but there hasn't been a single president where I'm like, yep, that, that, and that, and that. Um, for me, for example, I'm big advocate on privacy and security, which um, I think requires a lot of knowledge in technology, and a lot of these leaders. Not that they're dumb, they're idiots or anything like that. Um, you know, the, these guys are smart. Whether they come off as a moron when they talk, they know what they're doing. It is a strategy, um, but uh, they don't. It's about who they surround themselves with, and that's what I look at right now: is the experts and the people that are surrounding when they when we're talking about like security and privacy, and they don't have a clue. You know. Uh, um, 
and just to show that I'm willing to think outside the box, there's a new FCC. Oh, I'm getting in the weeds, but there's a new <laughs> there's a new lead uh, of the FCC, which um, doesn't agree on net neutrality like I do, which is what I wrote my thesis in. But I do think that he does have consumers uh, in mind. So, although he was chosen by Trump, who, who may I may or may not agree with, um, I don't necessarily think that's a bad choice compared to you know, devos and sessions and, and some other people. But that's, you know, that's my opinion. So I, I just urge you to look at the problem, look at the solution. If either of those are not correct, don't take the narrative that you're, that you're naturally inclined to, like whichever it is, and try to get the either the problem defined properly or the solution defined properly uh, it, into what you think, you know, is the right thing to do. Yep. I think those are great answers. So Cordero, I have a, another one. Wait, wait, Cordero his bit now that his mic is hopefully working. Is it back? Oh, yeah, up? Am I back up? You're back up. Okay. I was gonna say that I think it's the words that he uses. He uses words like biggest and best and greatest and huge. And I think he sells this. He sells this like larger than life um, movement. Like he really, like he's really selling what he's selling in a way that we don't really see politicians, you know, sell because they. They try to avoid language that uh, they can be held accountable for, where they uh, they make promises and everything. Where Trump has no problem promising things, <laughs> like no matter what, you know. So I think people are uh, he, he's giving them confidence in what he's saying, you know, through through that language, you know. I think both good answers. I have a, another question coming in from from the wonderful John McCoy, uh, and I think you guys are gonna have to take this one because I'm not. I recognize the names, but I can't put faces to them. So here's the question. Would you rather spend the weekend with... <laughs> who would you rather spend the weekend with in a trapped hotel room? Elvira, Bernadette Peters, or Gianna Michaels with the flu? Um, <clears throat> so I only know Elvira. And yeah. If we're talking it, about... Now, right now, I think I need confirmation, but I want to say Gianna Michaels had AIDS. Oh. So. Can I get the flu shot? Uh, like, would I have gotten the flu shot before I stay with the flu person? Because I'll just stay with the flu shot person, uh, the flu person, and get a flu shot beforehand and just chill. Uh, I wish we could bring up the photos. Uh, <laughs> I rec- I remember Elvira. Gianna Michaels sounds. I I, I want to say she was the. Okay, we well, here's another one. I just googled Gianna Michaels. Uh, I'm gonna go with her <laughs> over. Uh, <laughs> done very very little research but uh, yeah well let's i think we also have to see if gianna michaels had hiv so let's see gianna well as we've established it's not a death sentence <laughs> oh man put it on the line uh okay now i gotta see a picture of her oh okay well she that's who you're gonna. That's the one you would pick, Cordero. I didn't Google the third. That's yeah. Gianna Michaels. Yeah, okay, uh, so Gianna Michaels is a porn star who apparently said HIV does not exist in the in the uh, sex industry, in the porn industry. So, so. I mean, there she might does be not some merit though, to that so. if if there is a lot of extensive testing for these uh, actors. Is that what they're called? I don't know. Um, yeah. Chris says I trust the flu <laughs> shot too much. No, I'm just taking my chances. If there are, uh, you know, there, there's usually three to four strains in a flu shot, and um, you will usually only get the flu if they have a strain outside of that. So I'm just hoping that they don't. <clears throat> All right, you gentlemen will have to um, forgive me for just a moment. I need to grab my charger. That will be right. Oh, gosh. please talk amongst yourselves. Oh, okay, okay. Jeez, uh, <laughs> it says Daniel Shane Thomas joined. What? What is he talking about? <laughs> He's here. He's trying to up our numbers or something. Like that. Oh man. So Cordero, how was uh recording that episode for you? Oh, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, I had to tweak a few things, really get used to the equipment. You know, I'm not really used to um recording anything you know i know you guys dealt with it with uh you know doing music and everything so but um 
it was um, it was pretty cool though. Um, first time around, extremely nervous. You know, I yeah. came off very timid, so it was you know voice kind of cracking a little bit. You know, so it was. Uh, I think the the one that you guys have is like the sixth time that I recorded everything. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully it came out. Yeah, hopefully it came out a little bit smoother. Yeah, but um, that's good. Had a, yeah, had a good time though. Um, you know, really putting everything together and then. Uh, you know, found out a lot of things that I didn't know. You know. Yeah. Did you have any misconceptions before going into it? It's like, oh, I know it's going to be this, and then it turns out no. Well, I what uh the thing that I guess if I did have one you know realization was really why it was why it was such a big conspiracy about him because when he announced it wasn't like you know it was just him and then you know no one else he came out he announced it other celebrities announced it they all died and he's the only one left so it was once you look at it that way it kind of makes sense why people are like well why is he still alive not so much you know why is he still alive with the disease but why did everyone else die and he's still alive so i think if those other people had hiv and they had lived i don't think people would be as uh as confused or as um you know as uh i don't want to say uh I think they would they would trust uh, his story a little bit more. You know, they wouldn't they wouldn't look at it as a conspiracy if uh, it wasn't for the other deaths. So if we could, if, I mean, I don't know if this is insensitive, but it's always an interesting question to bring up by the effect that they have is if you <clears throat> could choose between Easy E, uh, Freddie Mercury, and Magic Johnson, um, and choose who lived and who died, so you. At that point, you, you'll have to pick two people to die just to make it even. So, which two, uh, um, not only which two would you choose, but which two do you think would have, um, I don't know if a bigger effect or a different effect, like do you think that Easy e uh, living would have no effect at the awareness of AIDS or something like that? Like, do you, how, how different could it have been? Hi, guys. I went on a mission to find my phone charger and I came back HIV negative. <laughs> I was asking Cordero if you could change the narrative and pick any two to uh, die and one to survive between Freddie, Freddie Mercury, um, Easy e and Magic Johnson. And what would it be and what effects do you think would have been different You know, if uh, Easy e was the one that was surviving and everybody else died or something? Well, first and foremost, we wouldn't have gotten Crossroads, which I think we definitely uh, <laughs> need That's to bring true. that up. That's true. <laughs> but um, I, it's hard to it's hard to say, really. I mean, because um, you know, with them being in music, I think of the three of them, Magic Johnson had the most wholesome image. So it would be kind of interesting to see how people look at it. You know, Easy E has this image of. You know, being with NWA, being a lot of groupies and, you know, being, uh, you know, Abusing uh, openly. Yeah. You know, and then um, Freddie Mercury being, a, you know, huge rock star and everything. I think if it, it might have turned the way people look uh, at drugs and looked at uh, sex, you know, because I think those were the two things that people associated with uh, Easy e and Freddie Mercury when they had HIV. You know what I mean? So it might might have changed the way people looked at that when it comes to to the disease you know that is i think that is, that association was pretty important moving forward so i i came into the question late, but the question was if what was the question again uh it's twofold so you get to pick who lives and who dies not to be insensitive but uh you know between magic johnson uh magic johnson easy e freddie mercury which to survive which easy e's got to go uh and <laughs> gotta go. And what Easily. if Listen, what effect would hip-hop. it be? On hip hop, I love hip hop. I grew up on hip hop. Um, Easy E is a terrible rapper, just the worst. <laughs> him and Too Short are the worst. To him, Easy E, Too Short, and Silk the Shocker, the three worst rappers <laughs> ever. And Crunch Black from Three Six Mafia. Don't all get AIDS, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So let's make it uh, easy. Magic Johnson passed away and Freddie Mercury survives. How do you think that changes the narrative of HIV and AIDS right now? And do we get, do you think, um, 
when a, a, a historic band like Queen, um, you know, isn't capable of creating new things because of missing key members, do you think they would still be considered the same if they were still, you know, pushing their luck and still put, you know, putting out albums all the time? And if they had Freddie Mercury, yeah, and he survived. Um, I would have to. Well, okay, so like many people my age, I would assume, or within my age range, I didn't know much from um, Queen other than you know um, what Bohemian we would Rhapsody. see. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. So I didn't know much. And, you know, now that I've, you know, I was doing this episode and I did uh, the secondary research, you know, after Cordero wrote it, I have to go looking for clips. And then uh, you know, ultimately you kind of get into this wormhole and you find these clips of, of all these other Queen concerts and stuff like that. And they were really a phenomenal, phenomenal um, band. They were, really were good. And he was a really good singer. Um, so, you know, what we can do is kind of say, well, how are these other bands who have continued on with their full groups, um, more or less, how well have they done? And I see no reason to believe that that Queen wouldn't have went on to continue to create really good music. Okay. Because the stuff that he was doing at the time was almost like a mixture of rock and opera. Who was doing yeah. that? Nobody. Yeah, um, It was ahead of his time. Yeah, yeah, so you have to kind of you think about that and the way that he would have maybe pushed the limits even more and the dude was just uh, really powerful on stage so I, I see no reason to believe and now obviously you kind of get into this whole realm of opinion versus you know reality or whatever the case may be but you know I see no reason to believe that they wouldn't have continued to push the limit to create like really crazy music you can even reference David Bowie to a, to a certain point and think about the music mm -hmm. he came out with right before he died and how well that was produced. Um, so who knows? I mean, you could have had Freddie Mercury doing uh, songs with with Timbaland, or or mm -hmm. uh, probably you Timbaland's know, that you know that thirsty. He's that type of producer that would have reached out for him. <laughs> or, or reached out to him. <laughs> so um, you know, Magic Johnson's done a lot for um, you know the awareness and uh, and and raising money for HIV and AIDS. What? Do you think that narrative would change if Freddie Mercury was a survivor of this? Obviously, if Easy E was a survivor, I don't think we would even know. Uh, I don't think he would say anything and be selfish. Um, but I don't know about well, Freddie Mercury. Again, when I was doing this this secondary research, he did uh, Easy E did come, you know, and say that he wanted people to know so that his his homeboys wouldn't make the same mistakes. So it's you know, if we look at Easy E just from the his persona uh, that he put forward, then you know there's that automatic inclination that say that he wouldn't have said anything about it. You know he would have just sort of been about okay. himself. But I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Okay. There's a lot of, of of rappers that that on the surface, when you look at their their, their public persona, that they're not really uh, somebody that's maybe uh, for the people. Um, but <laughs> I, you know we never know for sure. And he certainly made some some sort of uh, uh, effort to get the word out to his friends before he died. Now, if we're talking about someone who we mentioned in the episode who would really have been a, a, a champion for the people and the cause, then Arthur Ashe is your guy. Um, he probably, I mean, yeah. before, he was, before he died, he, you know, he set up a foundation that um, earned over $10 million, something like that. And that was just in the the time frame. Which what was it, Cordero? A year? He announced that he had yeah, ten months, I believe. Ten months. So within that ten months, he raised about a million dollars a month for AIDS, and he didn't get it in your typical fashion. So he didn't get AIDS uh, because he was uh, homosexual. Uh, he didn't get AIDS because it was something to do with the black community. He got it through a blood transfusion. So. Yeah. If he had any mm -hmm. preconceived notions about the disease, he could have just went along with that. Um, instead, yeah. he, he stepped forward for all communities, and and really, he would have been probably the the best voice for it. In some ways, he he is yeah. even nowadays. And there's the Arthur Ashe Award and things like that. But I think that was probably probably the person that would have been the the best to be the face of the disease. I know, okay. even though he probably wouldn't want to, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyways, that was just the uh, thought, uh, <laughs> your food for thought thing or whatever. 
Words are hard. Do you believe in population control? We kind of addressed that earlier, um, and you know, I hope oh, we no, go back a... to that. Go back to that. Who, to, who, to, who asked uh, the question? Jonathan Diaz, but I, I'll touch on that okay. a little bit. It, I, I just know. I just think there's more efficient, uh, and there are more things that uh, kill us uh, that are perfectly legal, and we abuse uh, unpredictably. Um, it's just not effective, cost-effective way of doing population control. And, and uh, yeah. population control doesn't work um, unless it's a global thing, and there's no way that you can get uh, the biggest nations of the world to agree uh, on stuff like that. There's just no way without it leaking out. I mean, don't even let me dive into security and privacy on this episode, but secrets always leak at some point, uh, and um, we would know by now. Yeah, so that's the thing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, that's the thing with pretty much any conspiracy is it at some point it has to come down to just average guys, janitors and things like that that have to be in on it at some level because not everybody who's aware of it is making a million dollars a day to keep this quiet. You know, there's some guy who's like just at the bottom of the barrel and has some information. Yeah, it, I just don't think that guy is, you know, not saying anything. Yeah, so I think there there has to be like a if he's asking this question maybe a different way. He's saying, "Do we personally believe that population control oh, okay. is something that we should do?" I say I'm not sure if that was the way he was asking it. Um, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not to say that there aren't people that do. Um, Hitler, he he was someone that believed in population control. I mean, he he tried to eradicate a whole part of the you know European populace. Um, and then there's there's the whole um, is it epigenetics uh, I'm not sure you know where we uh, where he wanted to uh, sterilize um, handicapped people so they wouldn't have offspring mm -hmm. so this is something that he was doing that was his way of, of handling um, population control and this is the thing you need to know about about something like that um, say for instance if if you're a dwarf right you and your wife are both dwarfs. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a dwarf offspring. So that doesn't mean that this is going to get passed on. So you could be this this weird sort of Hitler type of person who wants to eradicate all dwarfs and, and little people across the world. But you would, in essence, you'd be eradicating their children, right, who wouldn't necessarily be little people. They would just be normal people that would not be passing on that gene. So there's all sorts of, of little caveats in, in this that make it crazy. So um, I, I don't believe in that. I, obviously, I don't think anyone watching this would. Uh, are there people that do, people who get into power who, who would want to do this? Absolutely. But um, there's really, from a scientific from a scientific perspective there's a lot more into it uh, just because somebody has a specific gene doesn't mean that their offspring is going to have that gene it's, the likelihood goes up but and it doesn't mean it's going to happen we also don't have a full understanding of all genes and genetics and what we think as potentially being a defect now could be a path in evolution that changes something um, that may improve us so you might be hindering uh, by doing it the way he was looking at uh, because you don't have the full understanding uh, the way evolution works is it's not uh, a generational thing it takes a long time and so for you, you you just can't know that that bigger picture but as far as population control I mean it we're on top of the food chain and I think it's gonna kind of solve itself either we all kill each other off uh, because we can't agree on stuff um, uh, and uh, no, I don't. I don't think they should do it. I know. I I saw that China does it, um, or the the comment that China does, but it's a little bit of misconception. I, I mean, I, I guess it could be considered that, but it's just what what your kids are eligible for as uh, government goods. So you know, public education stuff like that. They do limit how many children, but I believe. Well, I'm not gonna misquote, but I believe it was recently raised. But I'm not gonna misquote. So yeah, I think I heard that too, and that is something that uh, that that I've heard before. 
and I don't know the truth in it. I think that's something that everybody needs to be cautious about is getting something uh, via hearsay and or uh, not a reputable source, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know the whole story. And, and that's I think anybody watching this, that's something that you shouldn't be scared of the words I don't know or I'm not sure mm-hmm. um, because those words are powerful. There's, they're telling the, the people that are listening to you that, you know, I don't know. So I'm not going to just say anything and have that be taken as truth. Um, mm-hmm. You don't have to say an answer just because you think so. Though I, you know, I vaguely have heard some things like that, but I would rather dive into it and do some, do some thorough research before I really was to write a thesis on whether or not uh, China, you know, practices population control through, you know, a one, a one daughter policy. And I am a, a firm believer in the scientific method, which one uh, thing that is often misunderstood about the scientific me- method is that when contradicting facts are introduced, you redo the entire experiment. So if the, if I say something wrong uh, and I uh, claim it as fact, uh, feel free to give me some credible sources and I'll look at that and, um, you know, if it... I will change my understanding and opinion based on those facts. Um, but I'm pretty critical on sources. Uh, the, I saw the, so how do you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I totally cut you off. I didn't mean to, but no, I was uh, how say do you like, feel about, go ahead. I was going to say, how do you feel about Chris's comment that birth control equals population control? I was going to mention that. Um, it, it is, but it's a self regulating, option you know you make that choice uh, and that is a choice that you should make um, until you're ready to have children although you're never ready trust me (laughs) it's awesome but there's no planning for it (laughs) Um, let's see John's John's uh, um, saying that he would happily talk out of his ass if you need a devil's advocate we may take you up on that offer. You get yourself uh, <laughs> Skype, and we'll bring you on here because I know how crazy that can get. Um, Johnny says, apparently, you can fit two billion people into just Jacksonville, and that I know I've heard before. So that is actually um, actually true. Uh, the The city of Jacksonville in Florida is the largest city in the contiguous United States by land size. So it actually takes up this massive amount of space. Um, the county is the city; it's the same. So if you look at it, it's just it, it takes up just this large, large area, um, and you can totally fit, you know, the population of, of the world into the city limits of Jacksonville. Good luck That's, getting them to live next to each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can't even do that from worlds apart. Uh, I'm, I keep on looking at the comment thread. And I, I, it's not, it doesn't, you know, uh, we just have a few people commenting. And, <laughs> and it's, it, it, it's getting fun down there if you guys want to ever take a look. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I feel keeping like up. There's going to be like a little beef here soon about, <laughs> about China. Uh, oh, boy. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Um <laughs> Oh, you know what? Nobody else will be able to see this after the this this recording. They won't be able to see the comments. Actually, yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Sorry, that that, that got me lost there. Uh-huh. All right. And, and some some things, you know, we aren't avoiding or anything. It's just like maybe we have something in the pipeline about it. Maybe we want to talk about it. Maybe we don't want to. Uh, segment our audience just yet uh, and arm ourselves with better conversation tools um, because I do encourage conversation here. Um, The internet is full of people not being nice to each other and that's not cool. We should really uh, be nicer to each other Um, and we nobody knows everything and maybe some people are just uh, misunderstanding things or uh, misunderstanding viewpoints um, and we do like to talk about that, so um, you know we we might touch on some of these things that are coming up uh, on there at some point. Um, we're just not trying to do that at this moment. I mean, we're we're two hours into this. I'm starving. Uh, I <laughs> this is so much fun. Uh, I wish it really was could could see it. Yeah, and and I really 
uh, hope you guys like the interactive um, notion of it and we'll come back for it uh, we do it every Sunday um, I, I, can we do a 7 p.m. for sure 7 p.m. Eastern 6 Central I'm always down if I'm out of town I'll, I'll figure out a way or we'll work around it cool um, yeah 7 for me cool cool so you know come back and see us um, and, and share it out so we can get more people in here uh, feel free to share those who agree or disagree with the opinions presented yeah, we promise that, you know, we'll touch on some some things that are political, but we'll never do it in a way where we have clearly chosen sides, because um, that's not what our show is about. As I said earlier, we all have political preferences one way or the other, but this show isn't about uh, politics. It's about getting people to join us while we dive into questions, however crazy they may be. Uh, so that we can both enjoy the ride down that wormhole or, as we say, explore the spider web that the question creates. So please and share something. the show. Yeah, so you learn something. Uh, we want you to step back and say, you know, that was that was cool. I didn't know that this was what this was. Hopefully with this episode specifically, you know, you can kind of step back from it and say to yourself, you know what? I didn't realize there was a difference between HIV and AIDS. And now that makes much more sense as to why um, Magic Johnson has been alive for so long. Any last words, gentlemen? Oh, fun as always. Um, I guess let's do some some quick shout outs because um, we definitely had some people that that had joined the show had had not been with us before, and people that had shared the show for us that that were doing it from the kindness of their hearts, and people that shouted us out just simply from the kindness of their hearts. So. Um, <laughs> That was good. Did we buy our beards at the same store? <laughs> it looks like, uh, Let's see how good. Like that. Let's get this guy a little like. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris, Chris is his family, and I, 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 a quick shout out to him. I appreciate you checking this out. Um, you know, uh, it, it it's just something that I've been having fun, and I'm glad you were able to hang out this long and just kind of chat. Uh, Hopefully you'll we'll see you again, and you uh, get other people in here to see our nonsense. If if anything, to show um, look look at these guys embarrassing themselves. <laughs> uh, so quickly, there's actually a ton of names that I want to thank. You know, people who have stopped by to watch the show. I don't really have time for that, but I do want to give uh, specific shout outs to to uh, John McCoy, aka Doctor Stevens Franz Nose, and we're going to take you up on that offer to have you on the show. Uh, just so you can play that devil's advocate. Um, a quick shout out to the podcast, maybe the best podcast uh, out of Orlando. Those guys had shown us love um, in their last show, so we would like to do the same. Um, shout outs to, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Karen Soslowski, uh from Fort Lauderdale. She has a great blog about being a new mother. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that is it. And of course, Steve King, Chris, Johnny Diaz, Rob. Oh, God, I want to say everybody's name. I really do, but this is just too long of a list. Do you gentlemen have anybody you would like to say thanks to? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, all of the people who checked in, it looks like we had uh, 337 views for uh, this episode, so I want to thank everybody who took the time to check us out. And and uh, the 21 people who reacted to the video and then the 16 people who shared the video, I want to say thank you to you guys, and we appreciate it, and we'll try to keep uh, content, keep you guys interested. And just, uh, I mean, I'm not good at keeping up everybody that's in here unless you leave a comment, and then I see your name and I kind of remember. So um, I saw a couple people join, but I don't like to call out lurkers, but I do appreciate you guys coming in. It really means a lot. Uh quick closing to keep track of us is the Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash my dumb question but you're here so I don't know we're saying that if you want to send us questions it's ask dumb questions plural at gmail.com and uh, iTunes Stitcher uh, Google Play you pick the ad, you pick the app you search for there's no such thing as a dumb question we're there if we're not send me an email because that shouldn't be right <laughs> um, and uh and, and that's and I think that's it for me. I, I, yeah, I'll be repeating myself at that point. Yeah, um, right. join us next. Join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central Time. 
where we will premiere our newest episode, which is completely a toss-up at this point. We have no idea. <laughs> um, but when it happens, it happens. You'll be the first to hear it. You hear it here first, and then it goes on to iTunes, and then it'll eventually make its way to our secondary um, um, apps like YouTube and and SoundCloud and things like that. So, without further ado, um, Cordero really dropped the ball last week when we had him do the do the outro. So we're gonna kick it off to him yeah. again, Cordero. Uh, then. There's no such thing as a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that was a question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's no such thing as a dumb question. I think that's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody <laughs> watching. Bye. It's been fun.